Apparently there's more Hifumi events! Wait, apparently there's more Nike events! How the fuck does this make sense? I can't spend time with myself, can I? Can I? <laughs> After spending so much time with Hifumi, I'm scared to spend time with myself. I might do very questionable things with myself. Nike? God damn it, Hifumi. You make me sound like what's his name? Fuyuhiko with all my swearing. God damn it, man. Get a hold of yourself. Wait a minute. Now that I fucking remember it, Mukuro made us a fucking sandwich. <laughs> oh shit. Hey, kitty, kitty, you got some work to do. Welcome Kumus to another episode of Danganronpa, you're here with Kuma! This time we're continuing off with school mode to finish the final three characters I haven't done. The first being Toko, second being Yasuhiro, third being Hifumi, and fourth being Chihiro. Okay, that is four characters, not three. But I'm gonna do my best to finish those four because I am absolutely drained from playing Outlast. You guys have no idea how draining playing a horror game like that is. So I'm gonna play some Danganronpa to hopefully revitalize myself and chill out a little bit. All right, let's get started. Skip the opening, yes. Ah, uh, it seems that where I left off, I had finished, um... The previous school mode cycle. So now I'm gonna do the new school mode cycle, hopefully get everyone's gathering to level 7 and 8, so next time I can get all the endings. Because this one I'm gonna finish the free time events, and next one I'm gonna get all the endings, which is gonna be awesome. Not at all sexist here, but Toko and Sayaka go into cleaning because screw you girls. <laughs> My two least favorite female characters are cleaning. I don't even know why I hate Saika. I probably hate her because she tried to kill us. That's, that, that, that'll about do it with me. You try to kill me, chances are I'm not gonna like you. And Toko's been treating us like shit the entire time, so, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't really like that. <laughs> but funnily enough, we're gonna spend some time with Toko anyway, so that's gonna be pretty funny. Since we've already finished Mondo, we finished Kiyotaka, and we finished Leon in the last one, so we are gonna do Toko. Because Kyoko's up to the um, school mode events, which we can do next time and get our ending. So, let us go with Toko! Alright, let us not screw up this one. Otherwise, she might cut us with a pair of scissors. <clears throat> what would you like to do with Toko? It's a scary question. Spend time with her. I have never done this before. I have no idea how this is gonna go. This could end horribly. You want us to spend time with me? I am as shocked as you are, I assure you. I don't know what you're p p p planning, but do whatever you, you want. That is scary. <laughs> that is really scary. <laughs> I spent some time with Toko. Oh god, that look is scary. Toko and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give her a present? <laughs> Definitely. Ah, oh, glasses. She seems to like glasses and we seem to have four of them. Perfect. I, I can't forgive this. I'll never forgive you for, for, for being this nice to me. I am so confused right now. Seeing Toko so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy. She's just standing there. Does she want something? She's not saying anything. What the fuck? Maybe I should try to start a conversation. Um, Toko? <laughs> what you, you, you want to talk to me? Well, I can't stop you, so talk already. What the fuck did I do? Okay, sure, but what should I say? So, uh, what do you like to do in your spare time? <laughs> Why do you want to know? This is kind of awkward. Well, I mean, you know, we're trapped here together, right? If we're gonna be friends, it'd be nice to get to know each other. <gasps> <gasps> what did you just say? Oh my god. Um, after that p -p part about being trapped, you're, you're, we're, we're gonna be what? Uh, friends? <gasps> we said the exact same thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling I'm gonna wake up strapped to a bed? What do you mean, friends? You, you, you think I'm stupid? You're trying to trick me. 
Uh, no, I assure you, I am not. For the first time ever, I have absolutely no ulterior motives to saying that. I, I, I've already been hurt once before. I'm not gonna let it happen again. Toko, I assure you, <laughs> I don't want anything like that. You've been hurt? What happened? Anyway. Come on, you don't really care about, about, about me. That's right, I don't. Let's just be friends. You don't want to, to, to know about me. Even I know that. No, that's not true. Fine, the then to, to tell me. Tell you what. You know why they call me the ultimate writing prodigy, right? Uh, yeah, sure. You've won all kinds of literature prizes and stuff. Prizes, man, my tongue. Then tell me what I'm good at. Tell me what my genre specialty is. I know absolutely nothing about Toko. If you really want to convince me you give a crap, you should at least know that. I've never spoken to you before. How am I supposed to know that? The genre that the ultimate writing prodigy specializes in is romance, nonfiction, young adult. If I say romance, I could be sexist because then I'm saying that women specialize in romance. But if I say non... Uh, this is a minefield. Um, non-fiction. It's non-fiction, right? Wait, that can't be right. I don't think you need to be a writing prodigy for that kind of thing. What's your Come on, if you really know, hurry up and say it. Um, the genre the ultimate writing prodigy specializes in. Romance? It's romance, of course. Stereotypical, but okay. Oh, you actually knew. Yes, I did. Your, big su your biggest success was So Lingers the Ocean, right? Everyone says it's your masterpiece. The book was such a hit that freshmen shot to the top of the hottest men polls, right? Wait, what? The book was such a hit that fishermen shot to the top of all the hottest men polls, right? Fishermen? What the fuck? How did you know all that? Yeah, Nike, how did you know all that? There's no way you, you care about me. I'm telling you, I do. I mean, we're friends, aren't we? <clears throat> I'm blind. Your straightforward nature blinded me. And she ran away. Toka ran off screaming like a banshee. I'm not really sure. Does she hate me now? Okay, that was the weirdest free time I've ever had. And I've had some pretty weird ones. You just unlock the skill vocabulary. Give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah, I really do need to improve that. My vocabulary sucks. Once we're all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. What the hell was that? That was weird. Okay. I like this music. I don't even know why I'm completing the Casanova. I'm just gonna do it for the lols. Because I can, their finding level should be high enough, so it should be easy for them to complete it. <sighs> Let's go spend some time with Toko. We could actually knock out her final event uh, in this playthrough, because we should be able to get enough of those free time cards. We'll see how we go, we'll see how we go. What would you like to do with Toko? Spend time together. Because we have to do the five free time events in order to get the ten hearts. You want to spend time with me? Yes, Toko. I do. I know, right? You thought after the first time I'd never come back. Shocking, isn't it? I don't know what you're planning, but do whatever you want. Maybe she's saying it in a non-sexual way. Maybe I'm thinking of it in a sexual way because I'm a terrible, terrible person. Probably. I spent some time with Toko. Okay, when she gives me a look like that, it's not my fault. When she gives me that look, and after the original Danganronpa game, where she quite literally orgasmed talking about something I forgot about, it, it, it's not out of the ballpark to sort of... You know what I mean? Whatever. Whatever. Would you like to give Toko a present? Definitely, let's give her another pair of glasses. They say that wearing these while performing incantations will help you better speak with the target of your spell. I can't even right now. Sorry, but I'm already engaged to Master. 
See? I, I didn't even... You see what I mean? Everything with her is on some level of... Uh, so I can't go on a date with you. Uh, if you're okay with that, I don't mind if you think about me. Guys! You can't tell me that I'm, like, thinking about something that's not there. If you're okay with that, I don't mind if you're thinking about me. Seeing Toka so pleased with something I made, gave to her makes me happy. Oh no, the silent treatment again. I thought Toko totally hated me. But it's not like she's going out of her way to avoid me. Still, we're not actually talking either. Hey, Toko. What's your problem? What? You have a question? You have a question f f for your classmate? Huh? Is she happy? I don't know. So I kind of asked before, but what do you like to do in your spare time? <laughs> Just write. I'm serialized, so I'm always really busy. Serialized. I see what you did there. When I'm not writing, I'm studying. I'm not an idiot l like you. Well, that was uncalled for. Oh, damn it. I had to go and open my big mouth again. You must hate me for sure now, right? Wait, does she actually feel bad for insulting us? Oh, wow. I'm actually going to start feeling bad for Togo if she feels bad for insulting us. Because I thought it was just part of her personality to insult everyone because she hated us all. But if she's actually trying to fix that and she's just doing it unconsciously, then I'm going to start feeling guilty for hating her so much. No, it, it didn't really bother me. But I can't believe you actually write novels and that people all over the world read them. So how do you get your ideas for what you write? Is it like real life experiences or... Are you stupid? What? I told you, didn't I? I write romance novels. Yeah? So, what's wrong with the question? How could I use my real life experience for that? Oh, right. It's all from my imagination. It's just delusions. Like most romance novels. Delusions let you fall in love as much as you want, even if you never do it in real life. Or are you just saying you can't write romance unless you already have lots of experience in love? No, not at all. It's okay, I'm used to p p people making fun of me. B -b but someday I'll show them. I'll get pretty s someday and show them all. Oh. So she doesn't see herself as pretty. Oh crap, she's got half a brain. Uh, now I'm starting feeling bad for Toko because I'm starting to feel that it's not entirely her fault that she's that way. Boiling over like magma, Toko stormed off. This time, I'm sure she hates me. No, she doesn't hate you, Nagi. She just, she's just really self-conscious about herself and doesn't see herself as pretty and uses her imagination to write romance because no one ever asked her out. Except that one guy that must have screwed her over, which she talked about in the first time we went out with her. God, she's damaged goods. I'm not saying it in a bad way, I'm just saying she got really damaged by a guy. Which is probably why she kills guys. Wait, I wonder why her personality split in the first place. It would have to be something really traumatic to make her personality split and to go after killing guys. It must have been a really, really cute guy that really, really screwed her over. And then her personality split, and now she's going after cute guys and killing them because of it. Note to self, beware of girls. The maximum number of skill points has increased. Look at you go. My god, this is creepy. Once we were all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. Not at all creepy. Okay, let's spend more time with Toko and see what the hell is going on. Maybe she'll tell us how that guy screwed her over and why she became a serial killer. I mean, apparently Toko gets a lot of character development in Ultra Despair Girls, which we will stream very soon, but maybe she gets a little bit of character development in the free time events, which sort of explains why she becomes a protagonist in the game. Okay, let's spend some free time together. Oh, we took her to the art room. The glorious... You want us to spend time with me? God, if I keep stuttering like that, I'm going to start stuttering like that in real life. <laughs> I don't know what y you're planning, but do whatever you want. The more I say that, the more creeped out I get by that. I spent some free time with Togo. 
What exactly do you do with free time with Toko? Because it's obvious that you guys aren't talking. What exactly do you do? Do you do to just freaking stand there? Because that's what it sounds like. Toko and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Toko a present? Definitely. Let's give her another pair of glasses. Because, you know, a girl needs as many pairs of glasses as she can possibly get. It's a little bit like a fashion accessory. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm already engaged to Masters, so I can't go on a date with you. If you're okay with that, I don't mind if you think about me. Seeing Toko so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. <laughs> hey, I, I want to talk to you. Well, that's a first. Huh? That's strange. Toko never wants to talk to me. I thought she hated my guts. What's your problem? Are you listening to me? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. I just w wanted to clear something up. I mean, I have to clear it up. What I said before. I d d don't want you to get the wrong idea. O okay? Huh? What did you say? About not having any love in r real life. I don't want you thinking I, I don't have any experience a a at all. Okay, here we go. Even someone like m m me has gone on a date. Okay. Oh. It's true. I'm not uh, lying. I'll tell you all about it if you r really want to hear. Go on. Um, no, it's okay. Well, thanks, Nike. I was in junior high. <laughs> Reverse psychology, nice one. I was in junior high, and out of nowhere, this is a guy from another class asked me out. Okay, I guess I'm hearing it anyway. Shut up, Nike. He asked me to make plans for the day. So the guy came and asked you out, and then he asked you to make the plans for the day. Guys, come on, show some initiative. I stayed up all night for three days planning it. And what I came up with was... It was our first date, so I wanted to do something t -t traditional. I decided to go on going to see something. What was it? Are you stupid? When you're talking to t traditional date stuff, what do you think it was? Let me guess, a movie. On a traditional date, you go to see something. What else could it be? A scenic drive, a movie, window shopping. I want to click these two bad options to see what happens. Did you go window shopping? That's pretty traditional. Nagi, what the fuck? Are you stupid? Yes, Toko. He's absolutely retarded. Again? I said I wanted to see something, didn't I? What something would you want to see when you go window shopping besides a window? You're right, that was stupid of me. So, if I say a traditional date and wanted to go see something... <laughs> on a traditional date, you go to see something. What else could it be but a scenic drive? I can't think of anything more traditional than a scenic drive to see the countryside. <laughs> Are you stupid? <laughs> Again. We were in junior high, remember? How are we gonna drive anyway? <laughs> Why are you saying a girl like me needs a chaperone to go on a d -d date? No, you're right. I should have thought that through a little more. <laughs> so when we're talking about traditional date stuff, it's a movie. You plan to go see a movie? Y yeah, it's pretty cool, right? You go, go, go watch it, then afterwards talk about it all p -p passionately. Yeah, that's typically the strategy. You go see the movie first, and then you eat something afterwards so you have something to talk about. Otherwise, you're eating and then awkwardly have nothing to talk about and then you watch a movie. In other words, it's ideal first date material. You stayed up for three days and that's what you came up with? <laughs> for once, Nike's got a point. Next, I had to d d decide what to go see. Since we were in junior high, we couldn't go see some k kids movie, right? I wanted something really action-packed. Yeah, a guy would definitely like that kind of thing and it could get you both pumped up. No, Nike, you're an idiot. Shut up. <laughs> so we d d decided to check out a Seijun Suzuki triple feature. I have no idea what that is. Tokyo Drifter, Fighting Elegy, and Branded to Kill. Irresistible for any guy, right? So you took him on a bunch of action movies. Okay. Um, and those are all... You don't know who Seijun Suzuki is? Uh, the car? 
<laughs> he's world famous for his one of a kind aesthetic, his unique blending of color. Sorry? The killer's the main character, and he gets riled up by the smell of cooking rice. A murder masterpiece. So you took the guy you were going on a date with to a serial killer movie. And you're a serial killer. I'll keep that in mind. Honestly, I think there's probably not a lot of guys my age who have any idea who he is. <laughs> you're right. I learned that fact the hard way. Wait, 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 wait. I'm guessing this guy is, you know... These movies are not action, they're horror. Like, really, really horrifying. You know, like Saw. So this is the equivalent of you going on a first date in high school and taking a guy to watch Saw. Which is more or less gore porn. No wonder he was scared. But then again, you being a serial killer, you probably get off on that sort of thing. Note to self, if a girl likes horror movies, stay away. He must have uh, hated it. Ate, he must have hated it because he disappeared right in the middle of the first movie. Yeah, I'd probably disappear too. What? He just left? And after you'd put all that effort into planning everything out? That's awful. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Besides, I found out it, it, it was just a dare anyway. A dare? Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, he lost a bet with his friends, so he had to go out on a date with me. No wonder she became a serial killer. And there I was, spending three days to come up with something for us to do. This is a all fault. You made me remember that terrible trauma. I d <laughs> Yeah, Nike. Nice work. My fault? Do you like humiliating me that much? Is that uh, how you get your kicks? I finally seen the r real you. No, I, I... I can't be around you and your perverted fetish anymore. What fetish? I'm leaving. Eyes burning with hatred, Togo glared at me before stomping off. Okay, seriously, now she's gotta hate me. It's almost like Nagi's trying to get Toko to hate him. <laughs> it's almost like he's got a bet with Byakuya. Hey Nagi, how long does it take you to make uh, Toko hate you? God damn. <laughs> or maybe Byakuya just paid Nagi in order to spend time with Toko so she stopped stalking him. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. Okay, let's now see what happened after that miserable failed first date and bridge the gap between bad first date and serial killer because there seems to be a little bit of a gap there. Let, let's see if we can fill that hole in. Like a grave. And time with Toko. Here we go. In the archery range. Okay, this is, this is not at all... Our perfect place for a murder. What? More p p pity? Aren't you such a g g good person showing me all this pity? Here we go. I spent some time with Toko. Toko and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Toko a present? Definitely. Maybe if we keep showering her with gifts, she won't kill us. Sorry, but I'm already engaged to Master, so I can't go on a date with you. If you're okay with that, I don't mind if you think about me. I don't know if she actually means what she's saying. Uh oh, here we go. Okay. I could feel Toko's silent pressure on me, stronger than ever. Take responsibility. Oh god, she likes us, doesn't she? Huh? Responsibility? Me? I've been tra tra trapped in here too long. There's nothing to do. The boredom's starting to c c kill me. So I thought maybe I could write my next novel. The pinnacle of romance literature. Oh, sweet love of God. It's a little bit like Aoi, isn't it? But I can't do it. Huh? Why not? I I've got writer's block. My powers of delusion are in complete slump. This has never happened before. So you mean to tell me you're becoming normal? Because you're having less and less delusions of grandeur. Isn't that a good thing? What caused it? Uh, I'm you. you did! You opened up all those old wounds! You're blaming me? 
God, I can't take it anymore. No more writing for me. I'm retiring. Retiring? But that's such a waste. You've got so much talent. Yeah, plus you're 16. You're retiring at 16. What the fuck are you gonna do for the rest of your life? Anyway. No, I'm done. I was never all that good in the first place. If you were never all that good in the freaking first place, who's number two? Because you're the ultimate rider. And now I don't have the motivation or willpower anymore either. Damn, it's like she's haunted by all those ghosts of her past. You have no idea. Listen, Togo. Why not take this opportunity to look back at why you started doing this in the first place? What's your problem? Why I started? Yeah, why you started writing at all. Reflect on that and I'm sure it'll give you at least a little motivation. Uh oh, the music just stopped. This is never a good sign. It all started with a single love letter. Okay, I just gotta chill down my spine. Oh god, this music. This is the emotional music when someone tells you their past and you totally feel for them. Okay, okay, let's be fair and just... Let's be fair about this and not... Yeah, let's be fair about this. Okay, okay. I promise not to be a dick. Too much. It all started with a single love letter. A love letter? <laughs> when I was in elementary school, I fell in love for the first time. He was a friend of mine. Oh. There weren't any feelings at first. He was the only boy I could talk to without getting hung up. But then he told me his family was moving to Shikoku. As soon as he said that, I could feel my chest start to tighten. At first, I didn't even understand what I was feeling. It was a total mystery. But I was too embarrassed to tell him how I felt directly. So instead, I wrote him a love letter. And then... And then... The next day, the day he left, I saw he'd hung the letter up on the school bulletin board. Oh, fuck. Okay, I just got two chills down my spine. What the fuck? What the f What the- What a dick move. That's not even a dick move. That's- Oh my fucking god. And that was your friend too. Fuck me. Okay. What? I got to talk to him again later on. Apparently, he hated the fact that I talked to him so much. Are you sure he was your friend? All the other kids used to make fun of him for it. I guess that was his revenge. To show the world my letter right before running off. That's the most miserable first love story I've ever heard. But one of the teachers that read the letter said I had a talent for writing. And that's what sparked my interest in writing. So that's what happened, huh? Gah, and now I dug that terrible memory. It's all your fault. All this trauma. It's all pointless. I'll never write another sublime love story ever again. Well then, why don't you try to write something besides romance stuff? Huh? What I mean is, why don't you just write about what you're actually feeling? Right from the heart. You're saying I should take these feelings of anger and emptiness and turn them into a novel? Or a really good metal song? Possibly an album? That could work. Dye your hair jet black. Honestly, I think that'd probably do her a lot of good. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Fine, I'm gonna do it. Right from the heart. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I do not know how to do that laugh. Toko dragged a screeching laughter behind her as she ran off. Well, she definitely seems motivated. But is that a good thing? Congratulations, Nike. You just convinced her to murder people. No, but seriously, what the fuck? What a dick. How is he even her friend? That doesn't even count as a friend. If that's your friend and you're getting shit for it, you either stop being the person's friend or you... Who does that? No wonder, like, she turned into a freaking serial killer and hates men. She got mistreated by them. God, I would never do something like that. Never. Never, ever, 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 
Okay, Toko, tell me, how is that new novel coming along? Did you write about your serial killings yet? Is it going to be like one of those movies where you're writing about the killings and then all of a sudden someone else gets framed for it because they stole your writing and they took credit for it? Oh, the perfect crime, Toko, isn't it? Okay, let's see what she says. <clears throat> what would you like to do with Toko? Spend time. Oh, Danganronpa music, so good. I was p perfectly happy spending time by m m myself. But I guess if you're so, so desperate for attention, I can uh, hang out for a little bit. Is that way of is that your way of saying that you sort of like us? I think it is. I think it is. See, the more I stutter because of Toko, the more I accidentally stutter later on. Normally I never stutter, but now I'm accidentally stuttering while I speak. Jesus. I spent some time with a cold and distant Toko. Toko and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Toko a present? Definitely. Do I have a pair of glasses? Probably not. But she seems to like an antique doll. A porcelain doll. Due to the exquisite craftsmanship of the doll and its clothing, many people still collect and prize them to this very day. I, I can't forgive this. I'll never forgive you for, for, for being this nice to me. Seeing Toko so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy. Hey, Mama Makoto, could you come to my room? And this is where Makoto... Jeez, okay, whatever. Huh? What's your problem? I, I, I want to show you something. I'll be waiting there. If we walk in there and she's in her underwear, I swear to fucking God. That's not like her, to talk to someone so openly like that. And she wants me to come to her room. She's probably got whips and chains and all that sort of stuff too. I'd better do what she asks. Oh yeah, you just do that, Nike. I quickly made my way to Toko's room. What the fuck? <laughs> Thanks for coming. If I walked into a girl's room, and she had that look, and she had the personality of Toko, I'd be freaked out. Thanks for coming. But don't get the wrong idea, I didn't ask you here for anything like that. Oh, I'm sure you didn't. If you lay a hand on me, I'll bite my own tongue off and choke on the blood till I'm dead. Does that count as murder or suicide? Trust me, that's not gonna happen. Anyway, what's going on? You said you had something you wanted to show me. I was hoping you could read this. Toga handed me a massive stack of thick paper. I saw handwriting on the top sheet, the neat letters packed close together. Is this... Your I took your advice and started writing. I wanted you to be the first one to read it. Thanks. I started scanning the text. A few seconds later, I was still reading. The words kept flowing into my head, the scenery unfolding before my very eyes. It's good. This is really good, Toko. I don't know if you've ever read anything this good. I don't know if I've ever read anything this good. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> but it's really dark. Super dark. Reading it kind of makes me want to die. Holy shit. You know what they c c call the type of writing where the author has directly experienced the subject matter? I it's a kind of naturalistic style popular in Japan. Katai Tayama's Futon started it all. Novels that use the author's own experience. I'm pretty sure I learned about that at some point. I novel. I don't know. Bile Doug's Roman. I'm gonna click this one. Isn't that called a uh, Bind Dung's Roman? I think I learned about it in school. Whoa. Totally wrong. A Bind Doug's Roman places an emphasis on the protagonist's process of self formulation and self discovery. For example, Herman's Hesse's Beneath the Wheel or Gothi's Wilhelm Meister's Apprentice. Oh, I see. I just learned something. I'm sure this will come in handy if I'm ever on a TV game show. Did you just sit in class memorizing the words but with no idea what they meant? I bet you did. That was pretty much my high school days, yeah. Gah. But I'm sure you learned about that other type of novel. Novels that use the author's own experience. I'm pretty sure I learned about them. I don't know. I novel. Are you talking about an I novel? Correct. Mine's still a work in progress though. But as soon as it's finished, it's going to become a shocking masterpiece that'll change the face of the eye novel forever. 
So you're more or less going to write a transcript of your serial killings. Toko, do you not realize that this could be used as evidence? Knowing her, she might actually be right about that. It's definitely some dark, heavy stuff, but it's the kind of thing you just can't put down. It will be a masterpiece, I have no doubt about that. And it's all thanks to you, Makoto. Please don't credit me for serial killings. Please. Thanks to you, I... I, I... Uh-oh. I'm so embarrassed. I'll express my appreciation in the form of a poem. Oh boy. A poem? On a locked and rusted door, I dug my nails in and dragged them down. Warm blood mixed with old rust, flowing down my wrist, coils like a snake, embracing my body. You watched me, a smile in your eyes. You watch. Time runs away, and you with it, you leave me drowning in a red sea. <laughs> well, now do you understand how I feel? Like a Marilyn Manson song? God, I hope not. But if it makes her happy, that's all that matters. Nagi, just get out of that fucking room as quick as you can, please. Otherwise, they'll be investigating your murder. Can I say that because I finally started to understand her, even if only a little bit? <laughs> so that's it for now. You've helped me find my motivation. Now I have to do my best to bring the story to an end. And when there's someone there to support me for that... What's your problem? That's what you call a friend, right? Yes, Toko. That is a friend. You and Nagi are friends. Friends don't kill each other. Friend, I never imagined I'd hear Toko say that word. But yes, Toko and I had finally become true friends. And true friends don't kill each other, Toko. Remember that. <laughs> now get out before you decide to lunge for me after all. Toko's report card has been updated. Your maximum number of skill points has increased. <laughs> Toko kicked me out of her room, so I headed back to my own. <laughs> oh my god. Well, wow. okay then. That was interesting. That was interesting. Okay, so hopefully we've completed the first concept. Uh, can we make a Greek statue now? So we can do the first thing and get our thingy? Let's make one. Nice! Oh yeah, I'm done. I'm done, bitches. Awful, look how you messed me up. My beautiful body! Oh wait, this is exactly the same as before. Hey, um, does this look good looking to you? I mean, are you really sure? Yes, indeed. I just saw you make a not really face. Do it over. Do it over. Well, still, you can create the backup and the complete the what assignment, so do? I guess I'll give you some more tickets. I received eight trip tickets. Sweet. Sorry to interrupt again. Ah, I've done this part. Monokuma Butler. Hilarious. <laughs> I know what I have to do. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Toko, for the love of God. This is so awkward. Toko seems to be feeling really good. Oh boy. Okay, we've done four free time events with Toko so far. Now let me just double check if we've done all of them. I don't think we've done the final one. We did spend time in her room, but... I don't know, it's not the final one until... Yeah, see? There's another one. So we... Wait, so Toko invited us into a room before doing the final free time event? Toko! Toko! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's spend some more free time with Toko. She's writing a manuscript about it. What the... Oh, okay. Perfect. I was just starting to get totally irritated at not being able to kill anyone. So now we're spending time with the serial killer. Great, Th this is gonna be absolutely fine. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's just spend time with a freaking serial killer. My so if I can't kill, at least I can beat the ever-loving crap out of something. Why are we spending time with a serial killer again? Genocide Jack chased me around the school, her fists flailing. So I spent several hours being chased by a fucking serial killer. 
Did I just get a little closer to Genocide of Jack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. Would you like to give Genocide Jack a present? Sure, let's just give a serial killer a gift. What would you like to give her? I don't know. Everlasting bracelet. You give this to a freaking friend. You're giving this to me? For real? Yes, we're friends. Friends don't kill each other. Oh man, I'm getting excited like, whoa, here. Seeing Genocide Jack so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy. I guess. Just, just, just roll with it, Nagi. You don't want to die, do you? Huh? Hey, Ma Cutie, listen up. Uh oh, she just called you Cutie. That's a bad thing. Ma Cutie, is that me? Oh. Something's building up, you know. Stress mainly. My it's because I haven't gotten to kill anyone lately, so it's building up. It's packed in there tight. Okay. Uh oh, the music just stopped. So why do you? What, 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 what? Yes. Why do you kill people? You should really stop. I mean, it's just meaningless bloodshed, isn't it? Meaningless? I know that, stupid. I don't kill because it has meaning. Then why? Let me ask you something, Mr. Smarty Pants. Why does a soccer player kick stuff? Why does a bookstore manager sell books? You'd never ask them that, right? It's exactly the same with me. She's using logic. I don't like that. That's not the same at all. It's totally different. Hmm. You got balls trying to lecture the mighty morphin murderous fiend. Well, here's my response. My beautiful it's easier to kill than to try not to. What? <laughs> what? I don't know why I even bother trying to understand Genocide Jack. I don't know why I even bothered to spend time with her in the first place, Nike. Toga's report card has been updated. You just unlock the skill Trigger Happy. After we were done, I decided to head back to my room for a little bit. I locked all the doors and barricaded them using a table. That was just weird. Okay, so apparently we're not done with Toko. Apparently we're not done at all. She's got more to offer because she's technically two people in one. Two for the price of one. Why not? Can we spend time with the normal Toko or are we gonna get the serial killer again? I have no idea. Wait, what are we gonna keep giving the serial killer to not kill us? I've run out of gifts for her. Ah, crap. You want me to kill you or something? No, please don't. You're not even close to getting me heated up. That's good. That's good. Let's just go with that. The time I spent with the murderous fiend was almost valuable. Please don't say that. She might actually kill you. Did I just get a little closer to Genocide Jack? Why did I call it Genocide Jack? I thought it was like... Genocide Show. Or was that only the anime? Why is it not Genocide Jill? Why do they think it's a guy? You think a girl is not capable of committing murder? Would you like to give Genocide Jack a present? Let's just find something. She seems to like royal curry. A little bit. A present out of nowhere. I'm getting all flustered. I get the impression that she liked it. That's good. Hey, Mackie-chan. Mackie-chan. Hmm. What should we talk about today? I guess I'm Mackie-chan now. What's wrong? You don't want to talk to me? Oh no, we do want to talk to you. Of course we want to talk to you. We would never turn our back on you. Actually, I did want to ask you something. Why did the music change again? Oh god. When did you appear? Or when were you born? Or when did you... What, 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 what? Huh? The hell are you trying to say? How did you end up with a split personality? Mm, yes, Who knows? Yes. I don't remember the how or the why of it. Not everything's got a big dramatic backstory to it. Maybe it was just a coincidence or bad timing or some other nonsense. Just coincidence? Could that really be all? Maybe living in a repressed modern society caused an unexpected reaction to bubble up. And maybe that reaction just so happened to be me. And since it was a reaction to the repressed society, my personality became the total opposite of that. 
the other me is a total downer, right? So that would make me... Well, what do you think? Quiz time. Hope you've been brushing up on your Japanese. How did she know I was learning Japanese? Oh, I'm on fire. Did the boot heel of passion just kick down the back door to your brain? The opposite of a downer. I guess it would have to be... Karaoke. Tsundere. Genki. Well, Genki means good. Tsundere is like that type of girl that wants to rip the living shit out of you. And karaoke is when you get drunk and you start singing like an idiot. So it should be Genki, right? It's Genki, right? <laughs> ding, ding, ding! As a response to the emotional black hole, an energetic supernova was born. She just wants to read her stuffy classics all day. But give me a good erotic thriller and I'm set. Mm, yes, anyway, yes. we're not all that special. Anyone could have that kind of weird reaction, you know? What is she, like the Joker or something? At the end of one bad day, she goes ape shit. You know, that's the actual backstory to the Joker. Well, the back Joker, uh, the Joker has several backstories, and that's the cool thing, because there's several Jokers in the DC universe. One of the Jokers is that he was a failed comedian, and at the end of a very bad day, he became the Joker. I think his girlfriend slash wife was killed, he lost his job, he was framed for murder, and then at the end of the bad day, he became the Joker. In another version, the Joker was known as the Red Hood, so he was already a criminal. He was the one that ended up killing Batman's parents, and then after confronting Batman at one point, he was thrown into the chemical dye thing where he turned into having pale skin and always smiling. So that was the second backstory, and the third one is the chaotic Joker that we've all seen. What was his name? Um, the guy that died, I've got it, in the Dark Knight. Um, there was that Joker whose backstory is co so convoluted that we don't even know whether or not it's true. You know, the whole why so serious backstory, we don't know, with a slit face. So, yeah. Maybe that's what they're making reference to. I think that's what they're making reference to. I think. Otherwise, I totally missed it. I don't know. Anyway, we're not all that special. Anyone could have that kind of weird reaction, you know? I mean, hell, the human mind itself is basically its own split personality. That's actually very true. Wait, no, that's... No, it's true. Why else would headlines be filled with stories of murder, theft, fraud, and all that crap? To turn away from the truth is to turn the aggressor into the victim. So why do it? Embrace it, and indulge your consciousness the way you've always wanted to. I'm not as twisted as you might think. You and me both gaze at the same horizon, don't we? This whole thing is a mess, it doesn't make any kind of sense at all. But it's my own fault for thinking I could ever understand whatever this is. Funnily enough, humans have a very animalistic nature. It's who we are. We used to basically be animals. It's just that we've suppressed it so long and created a society where it's unacceptable. Anyone can literally snap and kill someone. It happens. We're programmed with that inside us. It's just that most people never act on it, you know? I mean, think about it. Most of the time someone actually gets murdered, you know, through crimes of passion or whatnot, it was like a split second when someone snapped and did something they otherwise wouldn't do because of all the chemicals rushing in their blood. And let's not forget that we've got a programmed survival mechanism inside us that's going to pump us through adrenaline. It's going to pump us with adrenaline if something bad should happen when we have fight or flight mode. So we've got all this stuff in our nature that we never experienced growing up anyway. I think she's got a point, but it's pretty scary that we're agreeing with a serial killer. What, 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 what? You seem to be totally lacking Genki, so let me give you some words of wisdom to lift your spirits. Yes! Even a monkey can fall out of a tree, hit its head, split into a coma, and die. <laughs> okay, what was the point of that? Togo's report card has been updated. Your max and number of skill points has increased. Look at you go. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm like totally like, what? I'm guessing we have more free time with Toko, but this is just getting weird. Like, spending time with the serial killer is just more and more weird. Wait, do we still have more things? I'm pretty sure we have more stuff with Toko, don't we? Holy crap, Toko has more free time events than anyone. This is like free time event number seven, you're kidding me. Why does Toko get so many free time events? What makes it so special? What would you like to do with Toko? Nothing illegal. 
Ah, oh, she's doing the laundry. Is it gonna be no- Hey, if you don't mind hanging out with a serial killer, I don't mind hanging out with a chump. You and Junko would get along. Genocide Jack and, um... Killed some time together. Did we just get a little closer? Yes, Nike. Yes, we did. Let's just keep feeding her noodles and hope she doesn't kill us. Just keep throwing curry at her from far away. A present out of nowhere. I'm getting all flustered. I get the impression that she liked it. That's good. For me and so I appear. Makoko Chanel. This is the last time you'll get a chance to party with yours truly. Really? If there's anything you've been waiting to blow me away with, better pull the trigger right now. Okay. That's a very kind offer, but nothing comes to mind. Really? Nothing at all? Then just sit back and enjoy. Did you just make, like, a stripper joke? I'm gonna confess my feelings to you. My feelings for Master. Oh, okay. Do I really have to be here for this? To be honest, this is the first time I've ever had feelings for someone, but not wanted to kill them. Well, isn't he lucky? He's not going to get murdered by you. My beautiful scissors! Up until now, whenever I fall for a boy, that boy fell for my scissors. Wait. 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 So Toko had a love in junior high. She confessed her love. He screwed her over by putting the letter on the notice board. So Toko was so injured that every single time she fell in love with a boy, her split personality, Genocide Jill, would come out. Wait, it says Genocide Jill there, but whenever we refer to it, it says Genocide Jack. How does that make sense? That doesn't matter. So every single time she falls in love with a guy, Genocide Jill comes out and kills them. Because obviously she's scared of getting hurt again, right? That's just her ego defending itself. But in the case of Byakuya, she doesn't feel the need to kill him. Why? Is it because that he doesn't show any affection? He doesn't show any sort of threat? Or how does it work? Because that's how I figure her mind works. She feels threatened, she doesn't want to get hurt, so she kills them, right? It's easy. If they're dead, she doesn't obsess over them. Whereas, in this case, she's got Byakuya, who's always a dick, but she doesn't seem to care. How does that work? Well, let's see what she says. I'm until now, whenever I fall for a boy, that boy fell for my scissors. My first love chased him all the way to Shikuku to kill him. Well, at least we know what happened to him. But Master's something special. It's not about killing or not killing. It's not that physical connection. My feelings are totally pure this time. Yeah, it's pure love. I'm not sure I'm convinced. My chest is all tight and tingly. I've seriously never felt this way before. Jesus Christ, that look on her face. I wouldn't even mind not killing any other boys if it meant I could be with him. Wait, really? Of course. It would be unbelievably rude to cheat on Master like that. So you consider murdering people cheating? Or you consider falling in love with other people cheating? Hey Byakuya, you want to do us all a favor and uh, take a bullet for mankind? Quite literally. Take one for the team, man. In that case, you have my full support. <gasps> Seriously? Are you going to become our Cupid? You want me to drug him? If it means you'll stop freaking killing people, I'll do whatever it takes. Mm, yes. My little Macarena, I seriously misjudged you. You're actually a really good guy. But if we're gonna work together on this, we're gonna wait till things here calm down. So until then, don't yes! kill anyone. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh -huh. But in exchange, I'll be counting on you when we get out of here. Let's do this! Sounds good. It kind of sucks for Byakuya, but I'm glad I was able to understand Genocide Jack a little better. See, he refers to her as Genocide Jack, but... In the name title, it says Genocide Jill. What the hell? Not that I could ever call her a friend, of course. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, she's a literal serial killer. 
Toko's report card has been updated. Your maximum number of skill points has increased. <laughs> Pyaki is so fun. Wait, maybe that's why she got her own video game of Ultra Despair Girls. Maybe they got out of the school, and then in order to, like, you know, not get involved, Byakuya somehow got Toko sent on a mission somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's Byakuya's way of saving himself. <laughs> because isn't Byakuya in Danganronpa 3 one of the um, heads of the future organization? It's important that we do our best no matter what the goal is. I get it, I get it, we'll spend time with you. Okay, so that was the final free time with Toko. Now the real question is, should we get her to 10 stars? Or should we spend free time with someone else? I think we need a little bit of a break with Toko to spend time with someone else. I think we really should spend time with... Where is he? Where the hell is Hiro? The fucking bum. There he is. Because a lot of people have been telling me that Hiro is an underrated character and they're pissed off that I don't like him. But honestly, in this entire game, he's always thought that we were the killer. He's given us shit. He spent time with Kyoko. Wait a minute, what the fuck is this? Yeah, so he's obviously got the hots for Kyoko. And then in Danganronpa 3, he did fuck all. So, I, I think he needs a little bit of a backstory. So let's spend some time with Yasuhiro to find out what the hell is going on. Okay, Yasuhiro, you have one chance to prove yourself. Don't fuck it up. I swear he's like 26 and still in high school. What would you like to do? Spend time with Hero, of course. Okay, let's see how this goes. Well, I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat in the dining hall. I'll teach you where all the best power spots are. Okay, sure, whatever. Hero told me all about the best power spots. Hero and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give him a present? Sure. He seems to really like crystal skulls. A skull carved from pure rock crystal. Some think skulls like this were created hundreds of years ago, perhaps with alien invention, and considered them Upats. <gasps> Such mysterious power. This is a true blue Upat. <laughs> Makoto, the dawn of a new era draws near. Seeing Hero so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. Could it be? Hey Makoto, you know what I think? You and me meeting like this, it wasn't just a coincidence. Hmm. So I've got some good news for you. I'm going to give you a psychic reading at a huge discount. You're going to make me pay for it, you asshole? A discount? How about that? Normally it's a thousand bucks for two hours, but for you, let's call it 900. Asshole. That's only a hundred dollar discount. And even then, it's way too expensive. Don't be mean. Hey, come on. You should count yourself lucky that the ultimate clairvoyant is willing to tell you your future. So, are you pretty right often? Wait, so are you right pretty often? Well, I sure am. At the bare minimum, I've got a 20% chance of accuracy. 20%! 20%! At 900 bucks. 20%! 20%, that sounds pretty sketchy. What the heck? For real, don't make that face. Didn't you hear what I said? 20% of the time I'm right every time. Okay. That includes natural disasters, election results, you name it. Don't you realize how amazing that is? What about lotto numbers? Um. How about that? Okay, fine. I'll give you a special trial run. After all, I've already seen what the future has in store for you. Oh, please. This I want to hear. What? What did you see? Well? <laughs> you won't believe what I saw. It would appear that the mother of your children and the mother of my children are the same woman. Wait a minute. Do you guys remember in that trial where we can choose whether or not to let, you know, Kyoko get away with the thing and then we get executed? Or we you know, rat her out, and then she gets executed, and then when she gets executed, they play that cutscene where Hina has the kids of both Naiki and Hiro. He could be referring to that, or he could be referring to the fact that he's been hitting on Kyoko this entire time.
But then again, he's right 20% of the time. So that 20% may be referring to that cutscene. Whereas... I swear to God, if Kyoka ends up with this guy, this is just fucked. Like, why would you even have an affair with this guy? Why? What's so... I don't get it. I refuse. Denied. Don't like it. I'm right. Doesn't matter if you don't like it. It's just the way it is. Twenty percent accuracy, you said. You know. At least. I pray to everything holy that you're wrong. Please be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now then, since that was a special try run, I'm afraid I can't apply the discount. That'll be $1,000, please. Don't worry, you can pay me after we get out of here. Wait, hold on. There's no way you're gonna be right, right? Hmm. If you like, I could do a reading right now to see whether my reading was right or not. But wouldn't that just be 20% of 20%? Naturally, additional fees will apply. This guy's more sketchy than Monokuma! <laughs> Think about it, okay? Let me know as soon as you're ready for my services. Oh, he's gone. Do I have enough in my bank account to take another crack at it? Wait, he said a special trial run. He said nothing about us having to pay for it. No, I can't bring myself to pay for something like that. I never pay for a reading like that. That's bullshit. I can see how people could fall into that kind of cycle, though. That was close. Please, whoever's listening, I'm begging you. Whatever else happens, please don't let him be right. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, this was entertaining. Oh my god. Day 9. Okay, let's spend more time with Hero and see where the hell this is going. The first time was mildly entertaining. I will admit this. It was mildly entertaining. I'm giving you another shot, Hero. Well then, why don't we have a heated discussion about... Cosmology. I learned all about Hero's theories on the origin of the universe. Hero and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give him a present? Sure, let's just keep giving him a crystal skulls. I mean, he's the only one that actually appreciates the thing. I thought Mukuro would appreciate a crystal skull, or maybe Junko told her that under no circumstance is she allowed to find it cool. Otherwise, she may give up the fact that she is a soldier. Such mysterious power, this is a Drew Blue Opart. <laughs> Makoto, the dawn of a new era draws near. Seeing Hero is so pleased with something again, it makes me happy. Yo. Hey Makoto, what's up my brother and fellow mother lover? You're into MILFs, aren't you? Let's raise our semi-siblings up right, okay? I just gotta chill down my spine. Stop talking about that. Oh, so, you're so ready for the next good. round? Never. Actually, how do you know your fortune telling anyway? I saw you doing palm readings and stuff, and you didn't use any tools or anything. Hmm. Wow, I didn't know you knew about DVA. Wow, I didn't know you knew about divination rule. What? Divination tools? I can't sound that to save my life. I can't read that to save my life. Sounds like you know your way around the spirit world. Uh. I'm not sure you need to know that much to know about those kind of tools. Yo. Now that I know you're an expert, I have a question for you. A correct answer gets you another discount. How am I an expert? No thanks. Could it be? There are 22 cards known as the Major Arcana and 56 cards known as the Minor Arcana. Generally the cards from the Major Arcana are used for divination. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Major and Minor Arcana and the Major Arcana cards are used to tell the future. That must be I Ching, playing cards, tarot. Oh, I know, you're talking about tarot cards. <gasps> Gloriously correct. I will now tell your fortune for a measly 600 bones. Bones? What? Wow, really? It's something I'd... It's something... It's something I'd never say. Even... It's something I'd never say. I've had enough fortune telling for one lifetime. Why can I not read what Hero is saying? I see. Well, if you ever change your mind, you know where to find me. Sure thing. Anyway, getting back to what I asked you about before. If you don't use any tools or whatever, how do you know your fortune teller? Don't be me! Well, don't be fooled. I have my own technique. For example, I employ numerology. Numerology? Yo! 
It uses a mathematical formula to predict the future based on birth dates, letter numbering, all that. But I, but I didn't see you doing anything like that either. Hmm. Well, it's more of an inspirational style of fortune telling. Is this your way of saying that you guess? Some kind of unknown power just acts through you and suddenly, bam, you've got the info. You're talking about intuition. About Don't try and describe it using such a cheesy word. But if it's not intuition, then it's got to be some kind of supernatural power. Like Don't compare my clairvoyance to some occult bullcrap. I hate the occult. Take that crap somewhere else. You hate the occult? Well? Yep. Now here's some good news. Act now and I'll throw in an extra bonus on your reading. I used white magic to record a CD of spirit messages I received from the luxury suit of heaven. What? Five seconds of this baby and you'll be witnessing miracles and communing with angels for days. What drugs have you been using? And you said you hate the occult. The hey, business is business. The more I talk to him, the less I understand. I think years of drug abuse have melted his brain. Hero's report card has been updated. Updated with what? That he's a drug addict? I have no idea what the fuck is going on with Hero. Okay, let's spend more time with our favorite drug addict, Hero. What would you like to do with Hero? Snort lines of cocaine. We all know he does that shit. There's no other reason why he'd charge a mm. thousand bucks for tarot reading if he wasn't using coke. Hey, you wanna go take a nap? A little midday shut-eye always makes me feel better. No, Hero, I will not sleep with you. I wanna took a nap with Hero. Seriously, Nike? Seriously? Are you shitting me right now? Hero and I grew a little closer today. I bet you fucking did. Would you like to give him a present? Oh yeah, just give a present to your fucking boyfriend. God damn it, Nike. God damn it. Such mysterious power. This is true blue or pot. <laughs> Makoto, the dawn of a new era draws near. Well? Hey Makoto, are you familiar with Kamata? Uh, no. It's a tiny little suburb in Tokyo, right? And the music got all creepy. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of it. What about it? Hmm. Well, don't tell anyone I told you this, but they appear there. Huh? What does? Uh, um... Umas. You mean Kumas? Umas, I think. Thurman. Cryptides. Spaceships? You mean spaceships? I'm right, uh, no, those right? are UFOs, you dingus. A Uma is basically an animal version of that. I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have to tell you any more than that, right? So they were Kumas. Cryptids, right? Unidentified mysterious animals. You know? You got it. And it just so happens they've been appearing in little old Kamata. What kind of cryptides? How about that? The terrifying skyfish. In the West, they're usually called rods. They can fly and have a thin body and a big wide fin. They can move their fins in a wave pattern, which lets them move faster than the naked eye can see. Could it be? You ever heard of the Anomalocaris? Some people think that's what the skyfish evolved from. And some others think they're an artificial life form, a genetically engineered military super weapon. A flying fish is a genetically engineered military super weapon. What practical application would they have for a flying fish? <laughs> Let me guess, North Korea has been making them. For reasons unknown, because fuck that shit. Isn't that scary as hell? Yeah, here are flying fish. Definitely terrifying. But what would they be doing in Tokyo and in Kamata, no less? Nobody knows, but I think they're dangerous, you know? How close Kamata is to Haneda Airport, right? Yeah, I've been to Haneda Airport a few times. I don't want to wait till it's too late. I've been thinking I should call all the air... <laughs> Could you imagine him calling the airlines and going, Hello, Haneda Airport. There's a bunch of flying fish heading your way. You need to stop all the planes from flying right now. And they're going to be saying, Sir, how many drugs have you been snorting? Hmm. They need to know there's a way to get rid of those damn skyfish. 
and I know what it is. Let me guess, more drugs. As long as they can pay my fees, <laughs> I can keep things safe for them. That's what I'm gonna tell them. <laughs> like, like, I'm just imagining this telephone call, and I could, could you imagine receiving that telephone call on the other end and just being like, what the fuck? I wouldn't do that if I were you. I see a lot of jail time in your future if you do. Plus, isn't that like super occult? I just don't understand. Would that classify as an airport like threat? Saying that this is gonna happen unless you pay me? I don't know if that would be taken seriously, but... Hero's report card has been updated. What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, he's entertaining. I'll give you that much. He made me laugh. Twice. He gets bonus points for that. But in terms of his personality, he's nothing special. He's just insane. Absolutely insane. Okay, let's spend more time with Hero. My god. Okay, Hero, tell me more about your crazy occult crap. And if you ask me to come to your room, I swear to god. Why are we here again? This is creepy. Hmm. hmm, you wanna hang out with me? I'm as shocked as you are. It's not like well then, I have a story for you. Here we go. My research revealed a surprising connection between Tokyo Tower and the lost Lemurian civilization. What research? You can't even read. Can he even read? Hero spent a lot of time talking about the stuff that didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> I'm starting to think that Hero is high on weed 24-7. That is the only explanation. Hero and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Hero a present? Definitely. What would you like to give him? Another crystal skull. Because why not? Where is that crystal skull anyway? Ah, uh, crystal skull, where are you? I hear it is. There you go, have my last crystal skull. Aren't you saying I can have this? Yes. All of a sudden I feel invigorated. I feel awake. I feel like I like you. Please don't. Sing Hero so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. Yo! I'm surprised how well you and me get along, Makoto. Seems like we hang out all the time these days. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, definitely. Is that a bad thing? Hmm. Oh no, not at all. And since we're such good friends, can I ask you something? He's gonna ask about Kyoko, isn't he? <laughs> Wait, I totally realized something just now, completely out of nowhere. I feel like I'm about to see the performance of a lifetime. You and me both. Well? Say, Makoto. Have you been feeling down in the dumps? No energy, no spark? How did you know, Hero? I have been a little bit like that. Huh? You think so? You know? Oh, you don't have to hide it from me. I know what it's like, I've been there. That's what we call withdrawal. And you know what I'd recommend? Hmm. This. What is it? You know? A crystal ball. Okay, and? Hmm. Just hold on for a second. You're here. Completely against my will, Hero shoved the crystal ball into my hands. You guys know what I'm thinking, right? Think about it for a minute. Read it again. I'm a bad, bad Kuma. Why is my nose so itchy? What do you think? It's nice and cool to touch. Feels good, doesn't it? Bad Kuma. Actually, yeah. We're going to a bad place. Hmm. You can feel it's bad. <laughs> Can't you? Hmm. Do I feel it? How about that? It's the ancient power of our timeless Mother Earth. What? You see, the crystal ball has quite the history. It was found in the ruins of Atlantis. It is literally a priceless, one-of-a-kind artifact. This precious item grants enormous power to whoever holds it, bringing prosperity and peace of mind. This very ball has known the touch of Napoleon, George Washington, and even Genghis Khan. I think that's probably the single most unbelievable, unbelievable thing I've ever heard. Hmm. Well, I'd like to give it to you as a present. In return, I'd like you to come with me to a little seminar when we get out of here. That's sweet, hero, but no, shove it up your ass. And don't worry, I'll see about getting a discount on your entry fee, because that's what friends do. 
Let me guess, he's running the seminar. That's really nice of you and all, but I'm sure... I'm not sure I'm really interested. How about that? Sorry, the crystal ball has already acknowledged you as its proper owner. It wants to stay with you. It needs to stay with you. It has given itself to you. So now you gotta keep your promise. You don't wanna know what that thing does to Oathbreakers. <laughs> okay, I'm counting on you, pal. Refusing to take back the crystal ball, Hero hurried away. But I could hear him mumbling to himself and caught something about finally made my quota. He's a drug dealer? I really hope I heard him wrong. Hero's report hard has been updated based on your experience with him. You just unlocked the skill Crystal Prediction. I decided to go back to my room for a while. Okay, Hero is most definitely a stoner. I, 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 I don't see... It's hot. The fortune I predicted for today is super hot. I don't see how a normal person... Like... Yeah. I don't, I, I don't see, I, I don't get it. I just don't. I can't even right now. I, I, I just can't. I, how, what? This doesn't make any sense. I hope no one dies. See, I'm just putting them all to work. No one dies. Sweet. All right, let's see if we've got any free time left with Hero. I, I, I think that would have been the final one, right? Because we did get a uh, thingy. Is that the final one? Oh my god, he's got one more. Okay, let's spend another free time with Hiro. I think this is his final one. We've... Haven't been to... Oh yeah, we've been to Toko's room, we haven't been to his room. I can't remember, I took a little break, but uh, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Ooh, okay, let's see what he's got, let's see what he's got, let's see what he's got. Well? Well then, why don't we have a heated discussion about cosmonology? Again. I learned all about Hiro's theories and the origin of the universe. Here and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give him a present? Sure. Okay, I don't have any crystal skulls, but I have Prince Shotoku's globe. And Monokuma said that Prince Shotoku was a time traveler, I think. An aspherical representation of the Earth about the size of a softball. Some believe it to be an upad since it depicts a round Earth despite being many centuries old. I see, I see, I see. Such mysterious power. This is a true blue upad. I don't even know what Opart is, but uh, yeah, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Makoto, the dawn of a new era draws near. Seeing Hero so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. <sighs> this is getting serious, man. <sighs> when are we gonna get out of here? Okay, starting to freak out. The world is so big, so freaking huge, and we've all been stuffed in this one little tiny corner. I guess even Hero is starting to get stressed out by all this. Uh, um... Can we talk man to man? Uh oh. I haven't told anyone else, but I need to get a, this off my chest. Here we go. Huh? What is it? Hmm. There's a big reason why I'm so anxious to get out of here. A big reason? I'm super worried, man. I'm afraid someone's gonna bust into my house and steal my collection. Your porn collection? What collection? How about that? I've been surfing black markets and back channels to build a huge collection of all parts. Okay. No reaction? Wait, don't tell me you don't know about Opats. How the fuck did he know I had no idea what those were? You know, Opats, out of place artifacts. Oh, right. Stuff they find in the ruins of ancient civilizations, but with no explanation how it could have got there. The crystal skulls and the golden airplanes of Colombia, the Baghdad battery, just to name a few. But Opats can be more than just artifacts. For example, I definitely classified the famous geolopses of South America as op parts. Famous South American geoglyphs? Aztec. Are you talking about those lines of Aztecs made? Could it be? The Aztecs definitely know their way around that stuff, but... Nope, sorry, when it comes to op parts, the big Aztec contribution was the crystal skulls. So that's not it, huh? Famous South American geoglyphs. Uh, Nazca. Those are called Nazca lines, right? Whoa! You got it. Ace. On my second attempt. Why Ace? Yo. Plenty of museums and research centers claim to have all those different op parts. But you see... Well? Here's the shocking truth. For all of them, the real deal is at my house. 
Or maybe you were the only one stupid enough to believe that. Did I shock you? Did the truth slam into your soul like the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs? But you have all that stuff at your house? Mm. Yep, got it mostly through the internet. It's more valuable to me than anything. Oh my god, my god, my god, my god. He probably got it off eBay. He's gonna be the world's biggest sucker. I've invested every penny I have into that collection, which is why I'm so worried. If that stuff gets stolen while I'm gone, it'd just be the most tragic tragedy. You know what I've had to go through to get all that stuff? Yeah, you had to make a PayPal account, make an eBay account, bid on it. Why do you think I got held back like, you know, three or four years? Because you're a dumbass? Huh? <laughs> oh, uh, nothing. Forget about that last part. I knew it. Okay, anyway, everything I've read is... Okay, anyway, everything I've read is that when you really do serious research on those artifacts, most times they end up finding out that there's a perfectly normal explanation for them. What the heck? Don't be stupid. You stupid, Makoto. It's a government cover-up. They want to hide the ancient aliens and the secrets of the universe. So tell me again how much you hate the occult. How about that? This isn't the occult. It's about aliens and ancient civilizations living together. Yes, it's possible. I don't think there's anything I could say to change his mind. Wait, his hair reminds me of that guy that says, Aliens. You know the guy I'm talking about, right? He's the meme for Aliens. That's who he reminds me of. Hero's report card has been updated on your experience with him. Your maximum number of skill points has increased. Was that the final hero thing? I think there has to be at least one more. Let's take a look. Day 13! Please tell me it's not a Friday. Oh, we gotta build a concept. Uh oh. Monotone binary converter. Oh my god, I've built the butler! Oh my god. Just a minute. So this is the Monokuma butler, huh? Why is the bottom half just a vacuum? Is that what you think when you hear the phrase Monokuma Butler? Once you go in the direction of, you know, an actual butler or at least a maid. Eh, <laughs> Monokuma maid. Yeah, that'd be a nice two birds, one stone situation. Clean and cute. Anyway, do it again! It's a total failure, but you did technically finish your assignment, so I guess I'll give you some more tickets. I received eight trip tickets. So the next concept is... Cooking Mamakuma. Right here. Okay, then. I don't know if I have to complete all the tasks in order to, um, what's it called, uh, do the 50th day. I think it's just the final one. Okay, so we've got more free time with Yasuhiro, as I like to call him, Hiro. Let, 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 let's see what other crazy crap we can get up to him with. This guy, seriously, this guy. I, I just, I can't well? even right now. You want to go grab to bite to eat? I'll teach you all the best spots are. So he keeps telling me the same thing at the beginning, and it's just the end story that changes. Okay, fair enough. So as long as we keep giving him gifts, he's gonna tell us heaps of shit, right? Another globe. Here you go. All of a sudden, I feel invigorated. I feel awake. I feel... I like you. Seeing Hero so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. Makoto, ready for me to tell you your fortune? I told you, I'm done with that. Come on, don't be like that. This one's on me. Free of charge. No money down. Okay, this must be the final. That just makes me even more suspicious. Yo. I'll be waiting for you in my room. Meet me as soon as you can. This is disturbing. I'm super skeptical, but I can't just ignore him. I guess I better just go and get this over with. No, bad Nagi. No, but I'll have to be on my guard. This could be another one of his traps. Yeah, just go to his room. Considering how he's been up until now, there's no way I can believe he'd do anything for free. Oh yeah, he's always trying to rip you off. Against my better judgment, I headed to Hero's room. Yo, yo, yo! Okay, where's the bong, Hero? Where's the bong? Yo, Makoto, welcome. Thanks. Hmm. Listen, before we get to the reading, I have a little favor to ask. Oh, God. I knew it. Forget it, I'm out of here. I was right to be skeptical. Uh... No, man. I'm for super serious this time. Uh, I mean, I really am serious. I want to talk to you about a problem I'm having. Really? Really? Well, Hiro, admitting it is the first step. 
a problem? Actually, I listen to everyone else's problems all day, right? But who do I have to talk to? Friends? Nope. I mean, I literally have zero friends. Really? Jeez, I figured he didn't have many friends, but none at all. You know? This is the first time I felt like there was someone I could talk to, could share my problems with. Hiro. Okay, if you don't mind telling me, I don't mind listening. Hmm. Thanks. You know? So you remember I told you how I got held back a few times, right? Yeah, you mentioned that. For serious. Well, there's a kind of serious reason for that. There is. Hmm. Someone's after me. Someone's after you? Who? What did you do? D don't look at me. No. Uh, I. What makes you think I'd do anything? I just got dragged into it. I had an appointment come in. The daughter of some super rich upper management type of guy. Maybe I pressured her a little to pull out her entire life savings. Are you serious right now? Well, when her dad found out, he went ape poop and it turned into a whole legal thing. Really? You don't say? <laughs> and it turns out this Mr. Richard Rich guy just so happened to have ties to the mob. Nice work, jackass. So then I had these super scary gangsters coming after me. And you tried to run? Hey, yeah, but they caught up to me, of course. They tried to force me to pay them. Well, more than I could afford, so I snuck my way into Hope's Peak. Wait, you snuck your way into Hope's Peak? <laughs> the instance I leave this school, they're gonna come for my guts. Black market organs are in huge demand. But I love my organs, I don't wanna give them up to someone else. So here's the deal. Sell me some of your organs on the cheap, and I can resell them at market price. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, what the fuck? You can't be serious right now. Please. Just one, that's all I need. How many organs do you think I have? Please. Okay, fine, sell me your identity. Those are pretty valuable these days. <laughs> God, you're so selfish. Be honest, you used that money to buy those artifacts of yours, didn't you? <gasps> How'd you know? I remember you mentioning how expensive that stuff was. What else could it be? Wait, you're not suggesting I sell my opats, are you? Why not? That makes the most sense, doesn't it? If you can't bear to do it yourself, I'll help you. No, 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 no freaking way. That collection is all I have in life. How could you even suggest such a terrible thing? You're a cruel man, Makoto Nayagi. You can call it terrible, but... How about that? That's enough, forget I even ask. No matter what it takes, I'm gonna get out of here, even if it means demolishing my life savings. Wait, you have life savings? Hey. <laughs> so now you know. I figured if I sold your organs, I wouldn't have to dip into my retirement fund. Now who's being selfish, hero? What the hell is wrong with you? What, the heck? what, okay? I've had it. If you're not gonna give me your organs or your identity, you can just get out. What the fuck? Hiro angrily sent me away, and I was glad to go. In the end, I think I'm better off having talked to him about all of this. If nothing else, I got to know him a lot better. I learned to never let my guard down around him. Could what we have be described as a kind of friendship? No! No, it cannot! It cannot! That is not friendship. Friends don't ask you to sell them their organs. I couldn't stop thinking about what he said, so I just went back to my room. Guys. You guys gave me shit for not getting along with Hiro, and now I find out that he wants Nagi's organs. Who likes- why do you guys like him? I don't get it. This doesn't make any sense. Wait, was that the final free time? Because I don't really see myself going back to Hiro after he tried to get my organs. Yeah, it's done. He asked me for organs. What the hell, guys? What the hell? Guys, friends do not ask for friends' organs. Like, what is this, North Korea? So there's been people that have been giving me shit for not liking Hiro or finding him interesting. And now I find out that he's nothing but a scam artist and an organ seller. I 
I think I'm gonna take a little break and ponder on this for a little while. I'll return later to finish the video. Oh my god, I'm gonna miss that Kuma. Okay, let's, let, let's just continue. Okay, so I finished my break and I had a whole night to think about what Yasuhiro was talking about. I didn't spend any time thinking about it because he's nothing but a pothead. Okay, so we've got two more characters to go. We've got Chihiro and then we've got... Oh yeah, Hifumi. So I'm thinking we should do Hifumi because he's kind of neglected and Celeste is evil and he's been abused. And we're going to wrap up things with all the characters before we start doing the hard events. Okay, let's get started. I think we should get Hifumi out of the way, get Chihiro out of the way, and then finish off Toko's hard events. Because I think we need to see what the hell happens with Toko. I, I, like, there's got to be something. What would you like to do with Hifumi? Not a lot. <laughs> okay, I have no idea where this is going. You want to hear what I have to say, huh? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Well, what would you like to talk about? Comics, video games, anime, collectible figures, take your pick. Uh, let's go with video games. I listened to Hifumi's half-obsessed ranting for longer than I would have liked. Hifumi and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give him a present? Sure. What would you like to give him? I have no idea. Thank God for me, there are guides on the internet that tell me exactly what I can give him. He likes Coca-Cola. This does not surprise me. Contains a highly stimulating, almost addictive sweetness. Pair it with some nice junk food for a can't-miss combo. And diabetes. Hmm, I mean, I guess it's okay. Right. Well, it's an A for you, so it's not going to get any better, is it? Anyway, if you wanted to hang out for a while... Why is he drooling? Seeing Hifumi so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. <laughs> I see quality in you, Mr. Naegi. True quality. Oh god, here we go. Mr. Naegi. And that's why... I've decided to present to you my lecture on the nature of fanfiction. Okay. If we're going to be friends, you must be fully informed. I will permit no fanfic bigotry whatsoever. Okay. I don't think I have any fanfic bigotry. I mean, I don't really know anything about that kind of geeky stuff anyway. See, there it is. To you, fanfic equals geeky, right? But is that all the word is worth? Huh? Did I say something wrong? But that's okay. Because I take the word geek as a compliment. For you see, there is nobody on earth so full of knowledge as a geek. Yes, indeed. In a sense, a geek is like an expert. That's right, a total expert. A successful musician must necessarily be a music geek. A good movie director is a movie geek, you see. It's those experts, those geeks, who open up the world to others. So when you say that writing fanfic is geeky, you're recognizing us as true experts. Okay, so um, what exactly is fanfic then? Oh, super direct question for the win! Mm -hmm. Basically, we all have different kinds of stories and events, right? These are where groups of holy warriors sell their own stuff based on games, comics, and anime. And the stuff those people make is fanfic? <laughs> comics are the most common creation, but it also includes games, music, and even merchandise. Mm -hmm. By the way, there's a name for when a group of fanfic creators come together. Specifically, it's any organized group that comes together to release their work. A group that comes together to release their work. Menagerie Square Circle. Uh, Menagerie? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose on a technical logistical level, that's true. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about something a little more common. Hmm. Listen, I'm sure you know this. Go ahead and tell me. Ah, uh, a circle. Is it a circle? <laughs> it sure is. Of course you knew that. I mean, it's only common sense. And apparently it's not so common. I certainly hope you don't expect me to explain such common sense topics every single time. Well, like I said, I don't know too much about this stuff. This goes well beyond I don't know too much. But I guess I can't blame you. The propaganda never touches on that. So as a fanfic ambassador, by the time I'm done with you, you'll be itching to buy a premium pass to the next fanfic con. 
Okay, I've gone to an anime festival twice. Does that count? Like, I've, I've gone twice. Because we don't have that many in Australia. I mean, we have a few in Australia, but they're not that, like, sort of big or good. So I kind of went to the biggest one, which in Australia would have to be Smash, which was in Sydney. But unfortunately, it's now on the same date as my competition. So I haven't gone in like four years. But before that, it used to be on a different day. But of course they changed it because they're out to get me. It's all a conspiracy. So I haven't gone for like four years. Oh god, it's been four years. Yeah, I went in my first uh, year of university, I remember. It's pretty fun. Was it fun? Yeah, I remember. I was there, I was walking around, I was looking at all the merchandise. I remember I was a little bit disappointed at the amount of merchandise available. Because back in high school, I spent a lot of time online and on eBay looking at what things you could buy. Like, all the replica, like, swords you could buy from anime and video games and Devil May Cry and all that sort of stuff. And I found it all on eBay. And of course I memorized the prices. And then there was all the other merchandise, like DVDs, t-shirts, uh, figures and everything like that. And... When I went to the anime festival when all that stuff was more or less selling there, most of the stuff that was selling you could just buy on eBay anyway. Except it was selling at almost double the price, so I was like, what the fuck? And apart from that, I did watch the cosplay competition, and of course they had people from overseas. Apparently they had people that are really famous overseas, and obviously I knew absolutely nothing about them. And the competition was a little bit disappointing, I would have to say. Mostly because I realized that half the people competing were wearing costumes which they bought off eBay. I know, because I saw them. I was browsing eBay, and then I saw them all on eBay. And it was the exact same thing. So it was more or less a cosplay competition of whoever bought stuff on eBay. It was kind of bad. It was pretty bad. It's pretty fucking lazy. So it was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I think I went after the year after that as well. But I think I left early because I got bored. Yeah, I think that was it. The one in Australia wasn't that good. That, that, that's the kind of sad part. It, it's just... It was shit. <laughs> it was honestly shit. I mean, they had a lot of games that weren't released uh, in Australia yet, like JRPGs and whatnot. So in the area where they had the consoles, it was pretty cool. But the problem was, everything was in Japanese. And of course, you couldn't even get a turn to play it because there were guys just playing it for hours on end. Because, you know, that's what you do, right? You go to an anime convention and you just hog the damn controller for like four hours. Because fuck talking to people, right? Fuck making new friends. Fuck that shit. We don't need that shit. My god. Okay. <laughs> right. I, I, I don't know if I would go to that anime convention again. Especially not in Australia. I might go to one overseas, but not to this one in Australia. It was pretty bad. Obviously, he's excited, but that's it for today. I hope you're excited for the next lesson. But I didn't learn anything. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for the two of us. Why? I'm kind of scared to see what the future has in store for the two of us. If Umi's report card has been updated, you just unlocked the skill handiwork. It almost sounds like we robbed someone. After we were done, I decided to head back to my room for a while. Well, at least I'm going to learn something new. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, let's spend our second free time with Hifumi. What would you like to do with Hifumi? Spend time together. Oh god. He's with Alter Ego's laptop. You wanna hear what I have to say, huh? Well, what would you like to talk about? Comics, video games, anime, collectible figures, take your pick. I listened to Hifumi's half-obsessed ranting for longer than I would've liked. Fumi and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give him a present? Sure, let's give him another Coca-Cola can. Because, like... Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I got a question. If we keep feeding him junk food, and he dies of a heart attack, do we get the credit for the kill? That's an interesting question. Because I know if we poison the food, it would be considered murder. But, is giving him lots of junk food that results in a heart attack, murder? What do you guys think? I think if you do it knowingly, it would count as murder. Like, I, I, I saw recently online that there's a new restaurant in Australia that gives you a burger. 
but in order to be able to buy this burger, you have to sign a release form saying that if you die eating it, they're not responsible. And you're not allowed to have it if you have any pre-existing heart condition or cholesterol or whatnot. And apparently only one person in Australia has finished it so far. But also in America, there's a restaurant where if you weigh, I think, over 250 pounds, you get to eat for free. It's called the Heart Attack Grill. And you have to more or less wear a hospital gown when you're eating. And apparently a few people have actually died eating here. So I'm thinking, would that be considered murder if he died from the food that we gave him? That is an interesting question. I, I'm a dark, dark person right now. <laughs> okay. And if you wanted to hang out for a while, it's just creepy how he draws. I, I, I'm just curious how they designed him as a character. Is he supposed to be the stereotypical sort of fanfic, fanboy sort of thing? Is that what they were going for? Because that's the impression that I get. Seeing Hifumi so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. Yeah, it, he strikes me as the stereotypical person you think of when you think of an otaku. That's what I originally thought when I watched the anime. It's like, oh, this guy must be the ultimate otaku or something. And then I felt weird when people found out that I would play video games and then they called me an otaku. I'm like, wait a minute, I play video games. And like, yeah, you're an otaku. And I'm like, but everyone plays video games. And they're like, no, they don't. But this was a couple of years ago before video games were so openly accepted. Like, funnily enough, not even half a decade ago, if you played a lot of video games, you were considered a geek. And then within half a decade, video games became accepted as the most popular form of relaxation for guys in the Western world. So within six years, it went from, you're geeky and a loser, to, oh yeah, it's normal, everyone does it. What the fuck happened in six years? Jesus Christ. It's almost, because in high school, they more or less, well, it was mostly the female teachers were more or less shaming any of the guys that were playing video games in the sense that it was like, oh, you guys play video games, no girl's ever gonna date you. Or maybe they were just pissed off because none of the guys were asking the girls out. Well, they had it coming because most of the guys ended up asking girls out from different schools anyway, so that kind of turned back on them. Which kind of sucks for them, which is probably why they were shaming us. I don't know. I'm starting to think they were trying to pressure us into being what they wanted. I'm on to you. That was just weird. I don't even know where I was going with that. Seeing Hifumi so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. Yeah, thinking about high school is weird. Thinking back about high school is really weird. Now then, this time, would you like to learn about one of my many legends? The Legend of Zelda or League of Legends? Your legends? <laughs> Naturally, you don't become the ultimate fanfic creator without a few legends sprouting up around you. Okay, this I want to hear. One such legend is how, in middle school, I was able to convince the school to create a fanfic club. Okay. And from that day, I exposed myself and my fanfic to the world at large. By the way, do you happen to know what all my work is based on? Pretty pudgy princess? Sorry, no idea. Yes, well, surely you've heard of the highly acclaimed anime Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess. Wait, Demon Angel? I never knew she was a Demon Angel. Hmm. Now, you might think that that sounds totally cliche, but you would be wrong. I don't simply copy the pretty girl princess Piggle style. I took a total meta sci-fi approach. My perspective was seen as quite odd, of course, but if you really look at what I was doing, my version of Princess... Piggles was the total antithesis of the new wave of sci-fi movement. In fact, it was my response to J.B. Ballard's speculative fiction stylings. My geekdom is leaking out again. I apologize. What the fuck is going on? Anyway, unlike most fans, I never saw Princess Piggles as your typical Moe anime. Moe is that thing where... The girl's like cute and stuff, right? That's what Moe means, right? Yeah, I definitely got that impression. Yeah, I gotta find out what Moe means. 
<clears throat> what does moe mean? Coined in Japan in the 90s, moe pronounced as moe. Why, thank you. It's derived from Japanese word that means budding to sprout bloom. Is an ill-defined otaku term that means, amongst other things, cute, huggable, or endearing. Cute, huggable, or endearing? What the fuck? Wait, but don't most anime go for the cute angle anyway? I, I, I thought, whatever. But I can't believe you were able to single-handedly persuade the school to let you make a club. It's not that difficult if you convince them enough students want to do it. I mean, we did that in university with the kendo club. I was literally the first generation of that. It's funny how that turned out. A white guy helping establish a kendo club at university who has never done kendo before. How the fuck did that happen? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's because I bribed them with a cut of my profits. Well, that explains it. Profits? <laughs> and I've only gotten better at it. I'm blowing up. Now then. Up till now, I've always focused on taking part in Princess Piggle's single setting events. Single setting? Mm -hmm. It's when a circle gets together to come up with a project or event focused on only one show or series. So a Princess Piggle single setting event would only allow works involving Princess Piggle, see? Does this shit actually exist? Does this shit actually happen? I've never known about this. On the flip side, if there's no restriction on the number of properties, do you know what that's called? A single setting event only allows material from one show or series. And then the opposite of that is when anything is allowed from any property. Uh... Free for all? The opposite of single setting event is just called a free for all. That's absolutely right. There are actually plenty of free for all events every year. And yet, more and more slackers are showing up with no idea what fanfic really means. It's so annoying. I'm probably one of those people. I turn up with absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on, and I'm just, like, completely confused. So in order to crush these peons with all my might, I'm going to start taking part in more free-for-alls. Wait, you wanna crush me? Oh, okay. Crush them? That doesn't sound very friendly. I don't participate in these events to make friends, and I cannot forgive those lazy bastards. See, this is the fucking problem! Like, if I turn up to a fucking event with a genuine curiosity as to what the hell it's all about, and someone like this more or less shuns me away because I have no idea of what's going on, of course you're not going to get more people participating. If you're, like, more or less shunning anyone new that comes along. Jesus, man. This sounds like a circle jerk. That's what he means by a circle, doesn't he? It's a circle jerk. I don't tell me to ignore him. If you let some little wimp survive, you'll regret it later. Play any RPG where the wi villain spares the hero when he's level 1 and what happens? Boom, dead. Isn't that because if they don't spare him, the story dies? The hero needs a reason to level up. If he doesn't have a reason to kill the main villain, what's the point of the game? I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. Mm -hmm. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog industry where only the most brutal survive. Oh, but don't worry. I'm gonna start you off easy by getting you involved in some simple cosplay action. Okay, what the fuck is cosplay action? I know what cosplay is, but I don't know what cosplay action is. What, is it like when you cosplay and you film it? I'm so confused. Huh, I'm gonna get involved? Wait, did you say cosplay? You're, you're a pretty good looking guy. If your costume was decent enough, I might even let you work my booth. Work your booth? What the fuck am I? Oh, what's that thing? You know, at those car auto salon shows when you have those girls that more or less just lean on the car and the stereotypical guy walks up and says, Do you come with the car? And then she laughs and says, <laughs> Oh, you. My god. <laughs> I bet you could even net yourself a magical girl, Harem. Harem's when, like, one guy has, like, a dozen girls chasing him, right? Wait, magical girl, Harem. Why are you drooling? Yes, indeed. So with that in mind, let's change the world of fanfic together. No! No, Hifumi. I don't want any part in this. What does that even mean? I don't know, Nike. I don't know. The maximum number of skill points is... How did I get involved in this? 
Apparently we're gonna go save the world a fanfic or something. I am so confused right now. I knew I shouldn't have done this sleep deprived. I'm a little bit sleep deprived. It's important that we do our best no matter what our goal is. She, she's just egging us on to spend time with her. She's just jealous. And you know it. This game's like programmed to do that. Work, 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 work. I think all these, uh, all these tasks are gonna be easy to do. Even though we're not level nine gathering yet, or is it finding, we're still doing pretty well. Okay, Hifumi. Just, just, I, I, I don't even know right now. I'm just going with it. I don't even know where this is going. Cosplayers these days are totally ignorant of the origin, the history, the significance of their hobby. Thank you! Finally something where I'm gonna learn something. Okay, teach me about cosplayers, Hifumi. Teach me! And if you don't know your history, you can never have a complete cosplay experience. This is where my ignorance is beginning to show. So, Mr. Naegi, prepare for a gloriously detailed history of cosplay world. Now, in 1955... What?! I listened to Hifumi's half-obsessed ranting for way too long. Wait, I actually want to hear this. Did cosplay originate in 1955? Hifumi and I grew a little closer. Hifumi, are you going to teach me the history of cosplay or not? God damn it. I was once a ruthless ubermesh, but Mr. Naegi has awakened my heart through the power of friendship. May I call you my master? What is I bidding, my master? Execute Order 66. <laughs> oh god, I feel like Palpatine. Seeing if Fumi so plays with something again makes me happy. Wait, why am I his master? Oh god, no wonder he gets along with Celeste. Oh no, you're gonna tell me about your girl trouble with Celeste. I'm sorry, dude, but she's like a vampire woman. She's evil. What's wrong, Hifumi? It hurts. What hurts? Are you okay? Uh-oh. You're really, uh, sweaty. I'll get you some medicine. So what's wrong, Hifumi? Blue balls again? I told you not to hang out with Celeste. Oh, uh, wait. What kind of medicine do you need? Coke. He wants cocaine, doesn't he? Huh? Coke! Diet Coke! Oh, wait, but didn't we just give him Coke? Bring me some Diet Coke right now! Whoa, he just pulled a total 180. But I don't think I've seen any Diet Coke here in the school. All we have is regular. I suppose. I know, I've looked all over. And now I'm going through Diet Coke withdrawal. Withdrawal? Ugh, if only I'd remember the... Hypno eye technique. Then I take over Monokuma's brain and use him to go get me some Diet Coke. But I never did learn that one. You got lucky this time, bear. So, uh. I can't take it anymore. I would literally murder everyone in here for a can of Diet Coke. <laughs> well, isn't that troubling? Don't say stuff like that. You gotta get th You gotta get through this, man. You can say that because you don't understand the glory and splendor of Diet Coke. I drink Diet Pepsi all the time! Yes, I do! Diet Coke is a friend to all mankind. A single sip and your body melts like butter. It's the high amount of nothing can match. It clears my mind and even the most boring conversation sounds like a cinematic masterpiece. I knew I was going through withdrawal. Am I hallucinating now? Away, vile spirits! I cast thee out! Ifumi, calm down. Here comes the auditory hallucinations. That voice. Princess Piggles, it's you! What the fuck? <laughs> snap out of it, man! The princess told me to snap out of it. No, I'm not a princess! Stop drawing, for fuck's sake. You can't let Diet Coke beat you. You're right, I won't lose, I'm a strong boy. <gasps> oh god. I can endure this, for you, my princess. Now, let's play tag. Hooray, hooray, tag, you're it. Squealing like a little girl, Hifumi ran off to God knows where. Um, he's gonna be okay, right? Yeah, he'll be fine for sure. So this started off with teaching me the history of cosplay, 
And it ended with Hifumi hallucinating about Princess Piggles and chasing her around the school. Okay, now I'm curious. What the fuck is the history of cosplay? This I gotta Google. History of cosplay. Was he even right? The term cosplay is the Japanese portmanteau of the English term costume and play. The term was coined by Nobuyuki Takahashi of Studio Hard while attending the 1984 World Science Convention in Los Angeles. That says nothing about 1955. Ah, cosplay of Yu-Gi-Oh character Dark Magician Girl. Funny that that made it. Ah, pre-20th century. Wait, what the fuck? 1912? Are you serious? 1912? Masquerade balls were features of carnivals in the 15th century. One of the earliest recorded examples of costuming based on existing characters from popular media, as opposed to legend or history, were costumes based on A.D. Kondo science fiction comic character Mr. Squawk from Mars, 1908, and Mr. and Mrs. William Fell, 1910. You're kidding me, right? Holy crap! I... Okay, then. So apparently cosplay is older than World War One. Okay, then. Okay, I, I just learned something. I head back to my room. You learn something every day. I wouldn't mind cosplaying a Monokuma. That'd just be freaking adorable. Though where the hell would I get a costume of a Monokuma? Plus that would cost a fortune and plus would be really, really hot. What? He just gave me a sandwich? What are you, my wife? Wait a minute! Now that I fucking remember it, Mukuro made us a fucking sandwich! <laughs> oh shit! Hey kitty kitty, you got some work to do. Okay, Hifumi, tell me more. What would you like to do with Hifumi? Learn about the history of cosplay. Maybe he teaches us the history of cosplay, because last time he didn't. He skipped down on us. Hifumi, you're letting me down here. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I told you, but... When I focus as hard as I can on the palm of my hand, I can feel it heating up. I feel nothing. Am I about to awaken? Have I been chosen to become a god? This guy's having delusions of grandeur. <laughs> I've even learned to gather it up and shoot it. Is he making a Dragon Ball reference? Yes, indeed. Would you like me to teach you? I can show you the ways of Ifumi's secret technique. What the fuck? I wasted my time hanging out with Ifumi. I like how Nagi's so blunt about it. I wasted my time. Would you like to give him a present? Sure. What can we give him? We're out of coke. But we can give him potato chips! A sable stack made by frying the potato thin slices in oil. Beware, it's dangerously high calorie count. <laughs> I was once a ruthless ubermensch, but Mr. Nagi has awakened my heart through the power of friendship. May I call you my master? What is thy bidding, my master? This is so awkward. Hey, Mr. Nagi. Yeah, what's up? I feel like you're worthy of my trust, you know? Go on. You're the only one I can confess to. I know you like Celeste, but like, I don't think that's gonna work out very well. <laughs> I've reached my limit. I need to get out of here right now. Hey, come on, don't talk like you've got that creepy grin on your face. I need to see her. I need to get to a TV. I need to see the real Princess Piggles. What's he mean, real? She's a cartoon character. And now might be a bad time to bring that up. Listen, don't get so upset. I'm sure you'll see her again real soon. You'll see your, uh... What was it? Something angel, pretty pudgy princess? Without a doubt. Something angel? Something angel? How dare you insult the princess like that? Say her name right now, swine! <laughs> oh my god, he's defending her honor. Her official name. What was it again? I know it was definitely something angel. Demon angel. Cause that fucking makes sense. I oh, now I remember. It's full title is Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess. 
It's actually Demon Angel Star, a pretty pudgy princess to be precise. You left out the star, but I suppose I'll let that slide. Thanks. But jeez, Fumi, you really love that anime, huh? Mm -hmm. Of course, she's my guiding angel. She opened my eyes to life. Okay, this music means we're gonna learn about the heart and soul of Hifumi. So we better get real serious and not judge him about anything. He's like... That thing is like his Monokuma. Because Monokuma has opened my eyes to many things. Like bear jokes. How very Before her, I didn't have a single friend. I was just a mild-mannered boy who liked to draw. I hurt everything I touched. I was a model young lad who fell to the dark side. For example, sometimes a nicey nice type girl would come try to talk to me, right? That's it. You know, I'm be sure nice to be weird, dorky kid. And I'd scream at her, you're such a hypocrite. Why would you do that? I'd just yell right in her face and make her cry. Man, I love doing that. Why? That's awful. He probably traumatized that poor girl. Yeah, that poor girl was trying to make friends with him. But by total chance, I happened to catch an episode of Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess one day. At first, I felt nothing but contempt for it. I thought it was just another magical girl anime. What the fuck is a magical girl anime? Is that like magical girl Madoka? Because that shit is like... misleading. However, after that, she came to me in my dreams. Your dreams? <laughs> I dreamed that I went on a date. I dreamed that I went on date after lovely date with Princess Piggles. It was so much fun. When I woke up and realized it was a dream, I got depressed, but also realized I was in love. I wanted to experience that sensation again, so I started buying all the Princess Piggles stuff I could. However... Unfortunately, in the show itself, the princess never falls in love. Well, that's the point here, Fumi! That's what makes you fall in love! She's playing hard to get, you bastard! So, as much as I wanted to, I never got to see a face filled with love. The way I did in my dream. The face <laughs> she made when like... she was in love was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yes, indeed. So filled to the brim with my overflowing affection for the princess, I decided to draw that face myself. I was consumed with passion and I finished one Princess Piggle project after another. I was so happy with the results I decided to put it up on my personal website just to see what happened. And it was an instant success. That was the moment I was reborn as a true fanfic creator. So that's why, huh? I was so happy. I had no idea there were other people on the planet who'd felt the same things I had. I can't thank her. I know that, so instead, I'll ball up all my love and affection and use it to do incredibly embarrassing things to her. Wait, did I just read that right? I'll ball up all my love and affection and use it to do incredibly embarrassing things to her. If you're me, what the fuck? I think he missed the mark by a mile. Yes, he did! But maybe I'm better off for hearing what he had to say. I think I understand him a little better now. I just feel sorry for him now. She's still developing as a woman, you know, and I can keep developing her in all sorts of ways. And he's drooling while he's saying this! Ifumi, for fuck's sake, man! And maybe understanding him a little better is good enough. Ifumi's report card has been updated. You just unlocked the skill delusion. How is that a skill? What the fuck? I parted ways with Ifumi and went back to my room. Okay then! I never thought I would actually go through this thing. Is that the final free time event? Because if things get any weirder, I swear to God. Apparently there's more Hifumi events. Wait, apparently there's more Nike events. How the fuck does this make sense? I can't spend time with myself, can I? Can I? <laughs> After spending so much time with Hifumi, I'm scared to spend time with myself. I might do very questionable things with myself. Nike? God damn it, Ifumi. You make me sound like what's his name? Fuyuhiko with all my swearing. God damn it, man. Get a hold of yourself. What would you like to do with Ifumi? 
Nothing sexual, please. This is getting awkward. I feel scared to edit this. And I feel scared that people are going to see this and take it out of context. My god. You want to hear what I have to say, huh? Sort of. What would you like to talk about? I don't know what to expect at this point. I don't know what to expect. Ifumi and I grew a little closer. Would you like to give him a present? More potato chips. There you go. I mean, I guess it's okay. Anyway, if you want to hang out for a while, seeing Hifumi so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. Mr. Naegi. Okay, here we go. It's kind of embarrassing, but there was something I was hoping to talk to you about. Here we go. I'll be waiting in my room. Come as soon as you can. Oh my god. Without another word, Hifumi ran off. I wonder what's going on. To go out of his way to invite me to his room, what could he have to... To go out of his way to invite me to his room, what could he want to talk to me about? It's either Celeste... Or Porn. One of the two. He's probably figured out that there's no internet connection in this place, and he's running out of porn. Or maybe he's just drawing his own. I did what Hifumi asked and headed straight for his room. What the fuck? What the- I- I, I just saw... A fucking dress. Ifumi, don't tell me you fucking wear that shit, look at yourself in the mirror, and jack off. It wouldn't surprise me at this point. I'm just fucking dying right now. Welcome, Mr. Naegi, to my secret flower garden. Is it a fucking dinosaur? So, what did you want to talk about? Is it about Princess Piggles again? Piggles? No, who cares about her? Oh god, it's about Celeste, isn't it? What do you mean, who cares? I thought you cared, like, a lot. Oh. oh well, maybe I misspoke. It's just that I don't have room to think about it right now. See, I was kind of starting to think, just maybe, creating something original. Oh, right. For a second, I thought he started obsessing about Celeste, and he started thinking that thinking about an anime girl was considered cheating. Original? Mm. It's actually been in the back of my mind the whole time I've been doing fanfic. Fanfic is amazing, don't get me wrong. It's a way to connect to people to a shared dream, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I think I have more to offer. I'm ready for the challenge of creating that dream myself. I was thinking, if I could create something that might save someone the way Princess saved me, I want to create a masterpiece that will astound a mainstream audience. Well, just make sure you include big boobs, because that seems to be what everyone loves. I only watch anime on the weekend, and I only really know the most popular comics. I want to try and make something that has the same reach as stuff like that. Boobage. Boobage does that, and fan service. Lots and lots of fan service. I guess what I really want to do is create something that other people will start to make fanfic of. Of course, I'll still keep making fanfic myself, that's my life's work after all. But if that can coexist alongside original work, that's like the best of both worlds. So that's your dream? <laughs> a dream? When you put it like that, oh stop, you're embarrassing me. But having a dream to work towards is really nice. I'll be cheering you on, in private. <laughs> no, Mr. Naegi, in private is unacceptable. Huh? Yes, indeed. I want you to become my assistant. Ah, shit. That's right, a legendary assistant slash historian. Wait, what? I feel as if... Oh man, how cool is that? You'll be like my own personal narrator. Wait, you want me to narrate your story for you? Oh, okay. If Umi woke up... No, wait, that's not a good narrator voice. It was 7 a.m. If Umi woke up, he realized that he was in the awaking world. There was no Diet Coke. He was depressed. He went back to sleep. I'm out of ideas right now. Long ago, there was a man named Hifumi Yamada. He was an incredibly famous fanfic creator. His grandpa went up to the mountain to cut and cut and cut and cut. His grandpa spent... Oh, his grandma spent her days washing clothes, washing pants, washing like all kinds of stuff. Here comes a rare giant peach down the river. Grab it, sell it to the highest bidder. Hifumi? Oh, sorry, I just got a little carried away in my latest plot. Okay. That's what that was? Anyway, I'll be counting on you to give a world a play-by-play -play as I ascend into godhood. 
Um, I mean, if I'm successful. I'll be counting on your unique perspective as my friend. I'm glad I got to learn about Hifumi's dreams. See, he's got that fucking costume and the boots and the fucking bow and arrow. Kakuto ladies. Why is she so fat? Why does she look like a sumo wrestler? I am so confused right now. Please don't tell me Hifumi wears that costume. That's just creepy as hell. I feel like I've come to understand Hifumi a whole lot better. I think we've finally become friends in the truest sense of the word. His experience has been updated. My god. I left Hifumi's room and decided to go back to my own for a while. Well, that, that was a little bit predictable in the sense that he wants to do some unique fanfic. But the second last one was definitely interesting. Let's Very interesting. It. Shut up, Leon. No one likes you. <laughs> oh, another cheat shit. I will use this to power up. Um, who needs a power up anyway? Um, um, let's power up Leon. Need him to work. If they're full of energy, I'm just going to send them to the most difficult one. I don't give a crap. Start working, you peasants. Work, work, Mexican work. Why do I keep making South Park references? It's like one of my favorite shows. Oh my god, we finished Shifumi. So all we have left is Chihiro. Oh my god. Oh my god. All we have left is Chihiro. Who freaked me the fuck out with the whole mosquito, like, draining her blood. Wait, his blood. And not wanting to kill the mosquito, because he was obsessed with watching the mosquito drain his blood. I'm gonna take a little coffee break, and then we're gonna do Chihiro, because I, I, I really wanna finish up like the free time events so we can focus on the hearts. Because there's a few hearts we really need to get. We need to get Kyoko, we really need to get Mukuro, of course we need to get Sakura, and I don't know if I'll always gonna be an interesting one. And obviously Toko, but I don't know if I'll always gonna be an interesting one. I, I, I don't know if we're gonna do them all just because of how time consuming it's gonna be, because I'm gonna have to go back through um, uh, school mode in order to do it. But I really want to see some of these free time events. But first, I need my coffee break. Okay, I've got my coffee, so uh, we can start with Chihiro. Let's see where this goes. Would you like to spend time with Chihiro? I, I, I totally fell thinking that Chihiro was a chick. That's the scary part. I fell for it. Thank god I didn't find a cute or anything, that would just be fucking freaky as shit. Huh? Hi, you mean just the two of us? This is totally not awkward in any way. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm a little nervous though. Chihiro, stop! Please, for the love of god. I spent some time with Chihiro, even though she seemed kind of embarrassed. Ah, oh, Naegi. Chihiro and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Chihiro a present? Why am I st I, I just feel like, what the fuck? Blueberry perfume. Very popular with men these days, but to be honest, although it does attract the ladies, most guys hate the smell. But Chihiro seems to like the smell. Oh, a present. Yay, thank you so much. Seeing Chihiro so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy. Sigh. What's wrong? That seemed like a very heavy sigh. You know? Oh, sorry. It's just everyone else is working so hard to get us out of here, but I'm no help at all. That's not true at all. But, but... It's okay, you don't have to try to make me feel better. I know it's the truth. I'm completely useless without a computer in front of me. At least if I were a little stronger or something, then I'd be able to help somehow. Listen, you'll get your chance. I'm sure there'll be a time when your skills come in handy. This is the pretty fucked up part, right? Chihiro thought he was useless the entire time, and all he could do was create an AI. But that AI is more or less the reason they got out. Because that AI helped Nike avoid execution, fucked up Monokuma's system, as well as helped them do Danganronpa 2. So Chihiro had such a big impact on the story, but died in chapter like 2. Ouch. Talk about an underrated character. So you don't have to worry so much, okay? 
My skills might come in handy. If I get a chance, I'm gonna work super hard to chip in. When it comes to computers, you can count on me. You're right about that, no matter what anyone might say, you're still the ultimate programmer. Speaking of which, how did you get into programming? Huh? huh? Well, I mean, I always assumed most programmers were guys, so... You assumed right, Nike. you assumed right. Uh-oh! That's got- oh yeah. Is it really that weird? Nothing like that, I was just curious what got you interested in it. I mean, why programming of all things? You know? Why? I mean, there isn't much of a reason. I've always been kind of weak, you know? I was never able to run around with my friends or anything. We had a computer at home, so I'd kill time poking around with it. And I found out I really liked it. Um... My dad was a software engineer and he had a bunch of programs on there that, I, that he'd built. I found one of them and started playing around with it, adding stuff here and there. And that was how I ended up making my very first program. Interesting, what kind of program was it? Um... I kind of database software. Database software? You know? I used it could communicate with it and it would take that information and find what they were looking for. It was a way of interacting with the computer without having to physically type things out. She said it could understand the user without them having to type things out. So that would have to be... Well... Probably voice recognition. Not fucking telekinesis. But I'd like to see what happens if you said telekinesis. Did you use telekinesis? As soon as you think something, the computer reacts, that kind of thing? <laughs> that sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. You're so funny. It's gonna happen soon when we get implants in our brains. It's gonna happen, guys. It's gonna happen. Uh, um... But I think it'll be a while before we figure out to do something like that. No, I use something different. It wasn't with psychic power, but it was a way to convey information without touching the computer. It, 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 it's probably voice recognition. Use voice recognition, is that it? <laughs> yep, exactly. You could talk to it and it would actually talk back. It was a lot of fun. And that explains how Alter Ego talks then, doesn't it? It didn't even sound like me. It didn't even really sound like me. I would get totally absorbed in talking to it. It's like a kid recording themselves and playing it back again. Um... The key part of the program was getting it to recognize what I was saying. The recognition accuracy was the most important thing. Japanese is kind of hard, so it was pretty challenging. But you were able to do it eventually? You're right. Yep, and right around then, my dad found out I'd mess with his software without permission. I thought I was going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> but all he said was how impressed he was. The software was able to take natural speech and pull out key search terms to retrieve information. My dad said he worked so well, it was going to change the face of software interaction all over the world. Yeah. The development cost is still pretty expensive, so it hasn't spread that much yet, but... Anyway, I've been addicted to programming ever since. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy it made me to be able to make others happy. It's obvious how much you love computers. You seem to just light up when you start talking about them. Ah, sorry, I spent all this time talking about myself. No, I had a lot of fun learning about more about you. Huh? Huh, really? Yep, I hope you'll tell me even more next time. <laughs> Okay, let's hang out again sometime. It's a promise, okay? Jira's report card has been updated. You unlock the skill algorithm. Look at you go. Algorithm. I parted ways with Jira and went back to my room. I think all that stuttering with Toko has really screwed up my tongue. It doesn't work. It's just not working. We're we're on day like 20, so by the time we finish with Jira, it's going to be like day 23. That's going to give us heaps of time to get people up to level 10. By which I mean 10 stars. I just love this music. Okay, you ladies can go rest. I'm surprised I haven't killed anyone yet. You just watch, next time I send them to work, half the people are gonna die. We might be able to get more than one person to level 10. We might be able to get more than one person to level 10. It's gonna be amazing. What would you like to do with Chihiro? Spend time together. My coffee. You want to sit down and talk for a while? Sure. 
Chihiro and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Chihiro a present? Definitely. What would you like to give her? Um. Uh, where's that? Where's that thing? Ah, here we go. Perfume. There you go. A present? Yay, thank you so much. Seeing Chihiro so pleased with something I gave her makes me happy. Wouldn't it be awkward if Makoto started developing feelings for Chihiro? That would end in a very interesting way. Um, um if you don't hate the idea, would you like to talk some more? In your room? Jeez. If there's anyone who can say no to someone who acts like that, I'd like to meet him. Yeah, I know, right? This is emotional blackmail. Sure, I'd love to learn more about you. Okay, but what do you want to know? I have no idea. And stop doing that thing when you puff your cheeks up. It's like, it's one of those things that girls do. They go like, and you just want to go, but you're a guy, so don't do it. It's pissing me off. Well, let's see. What kind of program are you working on now? I bet it's pretty amazing. You know? Oh, actually, I just started the research process for something. You remember that database software I told you about? I'm retooling it into something a little more complex. Like an AI. But I signed an NDA with the company that hired me, so I can't really go into details. Yeah, they probably wouldn't want their wrong people to hear about it, huh? A little bit like Facebook. They steal people's ideas and just keep making shit. Uh, it's funny, because Facebook is getting sued by the creators of... Um, what's it called? Um... Oculus Rift. Because the people from Oculus Rift actually more or less stole, I think it was technology or source code from someone else. And then Oculus Rift got bought out by Facebook. So Facebook is using something that's patented by someone else and they're getting sued. But the thing is, Facebook doesn't give a shit that they're getting sued. They're actually producing the Oculus Rift. They're going to send it on the market and when they get sued later, they don't give a crap about paying however many millions they need to. That's originally how Facebook happened. It was a stolen concept. And the thing is, it just didn't get stopped. It just blew up. So the guy that made Facebook, Zuckerberg, he just made so much fucking money and the idea he stole it from got paid however many million they got paid. Business world is so bad. Even if you sign one of these agreements, you're still fucked if someone steals the technology. Yeah, they probably wouldn't want the wrong people to hear about it, huh? Like Facebook. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't trust you or anything, I just made a promise, you know? Sorry. No, it's okay. <coughs> Ugh. No, it's okay. It's my fault for asking about something you couldn't talk about. Mm. Oh, but... Maybe I can give you a little hint. It has to do with stimulating human thoughts. Stimulating? I meant simulating. Stimulating human thoughts. <laughs> Look at my life right now. She she said it has something to do with simulating human thoughts, right? Which must mean... Artificial intelligence. <gasps> you figured it out. So you signed a non-disclosure agreement, but you gave me enough hints to figure out what you're making. Nice work. Was my hint too easy? Well, I played the original game. What should I do? Oh, what am I going to do if they find out I broke my promise? They might... Don't worry, I'm not going to say anything to anyone. Um... Yeah, I know. I know I can trust you. Okay, I guess I can tell you about it. You know? I'm working on a type of artificial intelligence the world has never seen before. It's what we call a strong AI. It's designed to think like a human to process any mental task we can. A strong AI, hey? Um... You see, in the field of artificial intelligence, there's a strong AI and a weak AI. Weak AI isn't meant to match human intelligence. It's simply a type of problem-solving software. A weak AI isn't actually thinking, it's just executing actions programmed into it. Strong AI, on the other hand, is a program that can achieve true self-consciousness, full ego awareness. Mm. In other words, a strong AI is a complete entity, a computer program capable of becoming aware. And that is not in any way going to cause problems down the line. But it's always been just a hypothesis. Plenty of experts don't think it's even possible. It sounds like something from a sci-fi movie. And you're working on something like that? But... Well, like I said, right now I'm just researching it. I made lots of process on the programming side and the intelligence development. Mm. But when it comes to actual awareness, it's still a long way off. It might even be impossible. Really? You know? I'm not sure how to put it, but... No matter how well designed or complex a program is, 
No matter how closely the software can simulate working the workings of the human brain, I don't think that's enough. If the program is only simulating thought, it will always be lacking something. Lacking? Yeah. Well, I guess you could say a soul. And now we're going into the whole ghost in the shell standalone complex thing of what is in the code. If you could somehow pour your own soul into the software, maybe then a strong AI could be created. Wait, a soul? Mm. Yeah, I know. It's not a programming term. I'm not even sure how that would work on a technical level. Sorry, forget I mentioned it. You know? Anyway, all I have right now is the theory. There's still lots of research left to do. Artificial intelligence sounds like a pretty tough subject, but I'm glad I got to hear about it. Um. I wasted your time on another boring topic. I must have bored you to death, huh? No, you actually educated me on something. I learned the difference between a strong AI and a weak AI. Something that even though I did IT in university, they never mentioned! Nice work. No, the complete opposite. It was really interesting. Huh? You mean it? Yay. Okay, next time we talk, I want to hear about you. Yeah, Chihiro, about that? You, you sort of get killed off in chapter two. This is probably our final talk. Oh well, unlike you, I really am boring. <laughs> no excuses, it's your turn next. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yay. When she says it like that, I, th I think the only way to refuse is if you're one of those soulless AI programs she mentioned. Soulless, huh? Well, the Junko from Danganronpa 2 is pretty damn entertaining. Even if she is soulless. Once we were all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. Oh man, Monokuma, how oh, I'm gonna miss you. Day 20. Cooking Monokuma! Oh, I just burped, my bad. What is this? Aren't you guys all underage? Drinking is absolutely out of the question. If I find out you've been hitting the source, total devastation! You better believe this one's rejected. Reject it, reject it! It's a total failure, but you did technically finish your assignment, so I guess I'll give you some more tickets. I received eight trip tickets. So the next concept is Moe Monokuma. How are you? Mm, my intuition is very strong today, and it is telling me this will be a wonderful day. Celeste seems to be feeling really good, which is very unusual for her. She's probably planning to murder someone. That's usually what she does. Oh my god, we got more free time with Chihiro. Sweet. Okay. I don't think Chihiro would tell us his secret. Because Chihiro opens up to Mondo. It's funny how they position these characters. They position them in ways where, you know, their relations to other people. It's like Mondo Chihiro, but then Mondo Leon, and then you've got Monokuma Junko. Right? But then you've got Monokuma and Chihiro. And you've got Sakura and Mukuro. I think that's a reference to IF or something because apparently they have an epic battle together. But then you've got Aoi and Sakura, which are like besties. And then, like, that's it. This room is it. It's enclosed, right? So then you've got Celeste and Ifumi. They're together. And then you've got Leon and um, Sayaka. They're sort of a thing. And then you've got Byakuya and Toko. But then you've got this motherfucker and her. Explain that shit, Yasuhiro! I still can't believe that's a thing. I swear to god. What would you like to do with your hero? I think I have a little bit of a cold. My throat's starting to hurt. I'm gonna take a nap soon when I finish with, um, Chihiro. <laughs> do you want to sit down and talk for a while? Sure. I spent some time talking with Chihiro. Chihiro and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Chihiro a present? Sure. What would you like to give her? Um, wait, we ran out of perfume. What else does she like? Krillian camera. A camera invented to take pictures of electrical fields surrounding objects. Sadly, there's no film in it. Yay. It's really amazing. <laughs> I'll take really good care of it. I'll hold on to it forever. Seeing Chihiro so pleased with something I gave him makes me happy. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? I, I know Chihiro refers to himself as he, but I keep messing up between he and she because Nagi keeps saying she. Okay, whatever. It's just confusing. 
Hey Makoto, you remember your promise? Ah, uh, what promise? Huh? Did you forget already? Ah, oh, God. You promised that we could talk about you this time. You really did forget. What the f- <laughs> Oh my god. Chihiro looked really disappointed. With sagging shoulders, she wandered away. That's right, I did promise. She wanted to talk about me this time. I'd better go after her. I headed to Chihiro's room. Ah, oh, so that's how we got into Chihiro's room. Holy fuck, triple monitors, a leather fucking chair? So Chihiro's got a fucking computer in this place? That's freaking sweet! I've only got dual monitors, but Chihiro's got triple monitors. Nice. That's a comfy looking chair. Oh yeah, Chihiro's still upset, right. Listen, I wanted to tell you that I didn't forget about my promise. Of course I remember, so cheer up, okay? Um... Then, can we talk about you today? Sure, I don't mind at all. Yay! Really? Great. Then come in and sit down. Huh? I can come in? <laughs> yeah, of course. I know what she said, but I'm not sure she should be so quick to let down her defenses like this. I'm not saying anything. Okay, let's go. I want to hear all about you. I'm happy to talk, but what do you want to know? Um... Well, let's start with a question. Huh? You know? What do you like to do in your spare time? I love how Nike's getting asked the same questions he asks everyone else. Well, you know. I watch TV, play video games, lay around, watch porn. That's pretty much it. Huh? Huh? What about sports? Oh, I don't really play anything. <laughs> I'm bad today. The only time I run anyway is during gym, or when I'm running late in the morning. Huh? Really? And you're still so strong? Strong? Me? This guy got knocked out in one fucking hit. But then again, it was Mondo. No, I'm pretty much on the bottom rug of masculinity. But... but... You're on the bottom rung? Oh, Nike! Nike! Oh. Nike, can you please stop killing Chihiro? Chihiro seemed disappointed somehow. Oh, what's the matter? You know? Well, it's just, I'm looking for someone strong. Someone strong? Well, what about Sakura? Mm. No, I mean a guy. Thinking about strong guys, there is someone here who's probably been in a lot of fights. I don't... Sakura is not a guy. Let's see what... If we say Byakuya. Maybe Byakuya. Huh? Byakuya? You think so? Yeah, no matter what kind of problems he runs into, I've never seen him get rattled or anything. If you can believe in who you are no matter what happens, that must take a certain type of strength. Um... Yeah, that's true. But I don't think Byakuya is the one. Huh? What do you mean? You know? Oh, it's nothing. Does anyone besides Byakuya come to mind? Thinking about strong guys, there is someone that comes to mind. What about Mondo? He's the ultimate biker gang leader, right? He's got to be the strongest guy here. I see. Mondo, yeah, that's it. But why are you looking for a strong guy? Huh? She went all quiet again. Are you, like, into tough guys or something? You know? I want to start training. I'm so weak. Huh? Um... I thought if I could talk to someone strong about it, it might help motivate me. So that's why, huh? Sorry, I wish I could help somehow. Uh-oh. Hey, Makoto. Do you have any kind of, uh, inferiority complex? See, when someone asks you a question like that, they're doing it because they want you to ask them that question. You find more about people... Well, you find out more about people by the questions they ask than anything else. Oh god, I gotta start watching what I'm asking you guys. <laughs> Inferiority complex? Um... You know, some part of you that you can't stand. Something you absolutely hate. Well, I guess so. For me, it's how forgettably ordinary I am. And it's the very fucking thing that helps you land every single chick in this place, you piece of crap. I just, I, I can't even right now. It's the sheer predictability makes him like, oh, whatever. For me, yeah. I've been made painfully aware of this part of me ever since I came here. The rest of you all have your ultimate abilities, but I don't have any kind of talent at all. You know? And how do you overcome that kind of feeling? I'm not sure I can. That's why I decided to just accept it. It's how I feel and there's nothing I can do about it. 
And if I find myself thinking about it too much, I just find something else to do with my time. If I throw myself into something hard enough, I can forget about it for a little while. That's... Throw myself into something. I see. I see, that's a good idea. If I don't do something, nothing's ever gonna change. <laughs> yeah, I think your advice has helped me understand. Advice? I'm not sure I did anything like that. <laughs> Thanks, Makoto. Well, if it helped, that's good enough for me. Talking to her like this, I feel like I've gotten to know Chihiro really well. I think we understand each other a lot better. I wonder if maybe we've become a friend to... I wonder if maybe I've finally become a friend to her in the truest sense of the word. Chihiro's report card has been updated. You unlocked the skill Cheat Code. Wait, didn't we already have Cheat Code? After talking with Chihiro a little while longer, I decided to head back to my room. So did we just finish free time with Chihiro? I think we did. I think we did. On day 21. That means we can do about three people. Today's your weekly day off. Dismissed. Yeah. So we can get three people to 10 stars. I see, I see, I see. Let me just double check. Yeah. We have. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, we've pretty much done everyone's free times now. Holy shit. This is amazing. We've done everyone's free times. Which means... The next video is going to be everyone's school mode ending. My god. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give me a like. That really does help. And be sure to hit me up in the comment section below. I really love hearing what you guys think. So answer me this question. Who was your favorite school time or free time event with? Who was your favorite? There's a few memorable picks, I gotta say. Mukurai had her hobo moment. Sakurai had her I have a love moment. Aoi had her I like to be naked on the balcony and please be my boyfriend moment. Sayaka had the her I'm gonna fucking kill you moment. Toko had her I got screwed over by a guy moment. Byakuya had his I killed my siblings moment. Hifumi had his pretty pudgy princess moment. Celeste had her well She's creepy in her own way. Leon is sort of, I don't know, rock star-ish. Hagakure is just fucking weird and he wants to sell my organs. Kirigiri is just awesome. And who else do we have? Oh yeah, we have Kiyotaka, who is just overall funny. And Mondo, I still can't believe he's a dog person with a fucking Maltese. And then Jihiro, who is a trap. <laughs> So who was your favorite free time moment with? Tell me that in the comment section below. And share with at least one friend. And next time we're gonna do the school mode endings. Because I don't know what happens when you finish school mode. But I should be able to finish it because it should be fairly easy to collect all the items we need for the final event. And it's a shame that we can't spend time with Mr. Monokuma. But I really can't wait to see some of these school mode endings. Okay, till then, Ninjakuma out. Bye. Without warning, it began to descend. Deeper and deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper still. Deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper it fell! Oh wow, I thought that was gonna go on forever. I closed my eyes and sight fell away. All sound, too, disappeared. Too much emphasis on two. Alone in the universe, I waited for the elevator doors to open for the last time.